Good morning, everybody. My name is Benedikt Vagenende. Uh, I'm the head of acting head of head of unit of the pesticide residues unit in EFSA, and I'm very happy to welcome you on this one and a half days webinar on Metapath, more specifically on how to complete MSS composers for pesticide metabolism studies in plants and livestock. Why is EFSA holding this webinar? So as you probably are well aware, the transparency regulation came into force last Saturday and introduced new requirements for capturing, managing, handling and distributing data on plant protection products, requiring also the specification of specific data formats for regulated product dossiers. As you're well aware, uh, it has been decided to use the IUCLID format uh, for pesticide dossiers and besides that, it was also decided to use the existing Metapath software to collect data on metabolism in the areas of residues and mammalian toxicology. EFSA is therefore holding these webinars to provide training on how to complete MSS composers for pesticide plant and livestock metabolism studies. Uh, a separate webinar will take place on the 20th of April on how to complete the ER composers for the mammalian metabolism studies. So uh, this webinar this first webinar will cover today uh, the first set of the, the completing of MSS Composer for Plant Metabolism Studies. So the, the webinar of today will uh, is starting now and will last until 5 this evening. So that it's the first day uh, from 9.30 to 12.30. Then we will have a lunch break and start again at, uh, at 14 to 17 this afternoon. Then there will be a second follow-up webinar uh, focusing on the livestock and rotational crop metabolism that will take place on Wednesday and there only in the morning. So again, starting at 9.30 until 12. So there are two separate sessions. Uh, the details of the agenda have been provided in the announcement of this webinar. Uh, I would like to introduce briefly the speakers of today. So EFSA highly welcomes the support in the organization of these webinar sessions uh, from the ANSA, our ANSAS colleagues, the colleagues of the Pesticide Residue and Food Safety Unit who have a very long experience in the Metapath user group and are supporting EFSA uh, also in an external contract we are ha having for populating metabolism data um, for populating Metapath database with metabolism studies from previous active substances and MRL dossiers. So where ANSAS colleagues are mainly uh, performing the data validation steps and the subsequent entry of the data in the database. So uh, our speakers of today are first of all Gael Vial, who is deputy head of unit of the, the, the pesticide residue food safety unit in ANSAS, uh, who is participating in the Metapath user group since 2011 and who also provided similar trainings to member states and EFSA in the past. Uh, furthermore, we have also Vincent Vaillant and uh, William Buscaillou who are su supporting and providing the training today. Uh, they are both scientific risk assessors in the same unit in ANSAS and they also have a long experience in uh, the MSS composers and the Metapath database. Uh, besides the scientific support from our ANSES colleagues, who will be your speakers of today and also the webinar on Wednesday, we have the support of Alberto Goldoni and Carla Delaglio uh, from EFSA, who will provide technical support for this webinar. So basically, uh, I would like, maybe Gail, you can go, yes, uh, the second slide. So um, I would like to have some housekeeping rules of today. So the webinar is being recorded. Uh, the recordings will be available on the EFSA website, so also for future use by uh, people who were not available uh, to follow today. Uh, the webinar is in English and also your questions should be submitted in English through the platform. So as indicated in the screenshot below, uh, so the audio should be connected directly, uh, but this is a one way audio. So meaning that uh, it's only listening mode and you can write your questions in. You can submit questions in writing only. So uh, if you have questions, please type them in the Q&A box as indicated in the screenshot, starting with your surname, name and affiliation. And after every topic, ANSES colleagues will address your questions and uh, as is also indicated in the detailed agenda where you can see that after every topic, there is a Q&A session foreseen. Uh, besides uh, the questions and the webinar of today, we would also like to refer to the Metapath webpage that was published on the EFSA website two weeks ago, where also some useful material can be, can be found. Uh, there is a manual on Metapath and also video tutorials uh, also kindly prepared by our ANSES colleagues. 
furthermore, uh, we also referred to the Euclid MRL manual that was published last week that is providing instructions on how to report metabolism data. Uh, so the questions can be submitted in writing, as I indicated, uh, in case certain questions cannot be answered during the webinar, because eventually further investigation is required prior to answering the question, or the questions are more of procedural nature, because of course our ANSYS colleagues will focus on the scientific technical aspect of the, the software today, but those questions that are not answered in writing, uh, that are not answered during the webinar today will be answered uh, in writing. Also on the last day of the webinar, we will provide um, details of the MRL functional mailbox where further questions can be submitted uh, that might also pop up after the webinars. As a last point, um, due to the COVID outbreak, this webinar is organized remotely, uh, so meaning using personal inter internal networks. So we would like to apologize in advance if this would cause any disruption uh, in this webinar. So um, with this, I would uh, yeah, like to welcome you once again and thank our ANSYS colleagues for uh, supporting us in this webinar. And then I would like to give the floor to, to Gael, please. Thank you. Thank you, Benedict. Um, good morning, um, everybody. Um, thank you for coming to this, uh, to this uh, webinar on Metapass and more precisely on how to complete uh, MSS Composer for pesticide metabolism studies. As Benedict said, I am Gail Vial uh, from the Residue and Food Safety Unit of uh, the Regulated Product Assessment Department of ANSES. And I'm very pleased to give you this uh, short introduction on Metapath. After this introduction, we would start the day with how to complete MSS Composer for plants. And then on Wednesday, we will continue with uh, MSS on animal and rotational crop studies. So first of all, why Metapass? As you know, in the framework of pesticide assessment, several kinds of metabolic studies have to be submitted to study the fate of active substance in rats, plant, livestock, rotational crops, soil or water. And you also probably know the goal of this study is to identify the metabolic pathway of the active substance, to identify the relevant metabolites and then to define the residue in food and environmental compartments. In Europe, there are more than uh, 460 approved active substances, which represent more than 3,000 metabolism studies. And if one of the main issues of these studies is to well identify the relevant metabolite to include in the residue definition for each active substance, there is until today no way to easily identify common metabolite to several pesticides. Indeed, depending on the laboratory, the company, etc., the same metabolite could be named differently. And this observation conduct to the development of Metapath. So what is Metapath? It's first it's a database on pesticide metabolism with can contain, which can contain all the metabolic pathway for all the active substances. The database contains the experimental condition reported in the studies and hollows comparison of chemical structure, search for common metabolites and metabolic profile comparison. Metapath has been developed since uh, 2005 by uh, EPA on the Laboratory of Mathematical Chemistry of Burgas in Bulgaria. They firstly developed the database and the MSS composer for rat and animal metabolism. Then uh, we've also the effort of the MUG for Metapass user group and OECD. MSS composer for plant and rotational crops were developed and the database populated through several projects. One with the Canadian Agency, the PMRA on livestock metabolism, another with ANSES in collaboration with EPA. In 2019, 19. In the context of the transparency regulation, EFSA launched a project with BFR and ANSES on incorporation of more than 1,200 maps in the database. So what is inside Metapass? Metapass is made of two modules. One is the MSS Composer, which has to be used to enter data in the base. The MSS Composer were harmonized with the OECD templates and could be 
and could be generated as a data evaluation report. The other one is the Metapass database in which the MSS Composer, the XML file, have been imported and which allows to, visual, to, to view metabolic profiles. The Metapass database contains tools to be used to identify common metabolite or to compare metabolic pathways. To conclude, Metapass is a software, software which allows to identify common metabolite chemical structure similarity to metabolic pathway of different active substances, and it will serve in hazard identification and in mutualization of the work between regulatory agencies. And in the context of the transparency regulation implementation, it was agreed that data on the metabolism in the area of residues generated with the Metapass Composer software should be submitted as part of the Euclid dossier. So that's why today we will explain how to do this and especially how to complete MSS Composer for plant metabolic studies. We will present the different parts of the plant composer, how to open the composer, how to fill in the information related to materials and method, the information uh, related to the result, and how to fill in the appendix in the composer. And on Wednesday, we will focus as previously previously said on the composer for livestock and rotational crop studies and their specificities. For each part, we will use the same structure, a theory chapter, a live session, a video or to illustrate the point of intention. And as, as Benedict say, each part will be followed by a Q&A session. So for this, please post your question in the chat during the presentation and we will answer to them after the presentation. So now let's start with Vincent, who will explain how to opening an MSS Composer. Hi everyone, so I'm Vincent Vaillant, I'm a risk assessor at ANSES, and I used to work a lot on Metapass and on the MSS uh, Composer. So as Gail said, we, we will work uh, today on, I'm sorry, just a minute. Okay. So, as Gail said, um, we will work today on plant MSS composer and how to summarize a plant metabolism study in this MSS composer. Um, three types of MSS composer exist one for primary crop, one for rotational crop, and the last one for livestock. And we will focus today on how do we detail a um, plant metabolism study in plant MSS composer. We will explain to you the different sections and the different character characteristics of the MSS composer. Through all the day and for all sections, we will begin by a general presentation of the MSS Composer. After, we will show you to how to fill the MSS and after all, we will present you a short summary of the key points, an overview of what is really important to know if we have time. In the last minutes, we will answer to, to your question. For the live session, we will work on a fictive MSS composer whom active substance is MTPWB2931 for Metapass webinar and all data detailed in the MSS composer are fictive. So on this slide, we have the general agenda of the day. We will develop all section of MSS composer, the so general info section, the material and method, results and discussion, conclusion, appendix and attachment. But first, I will present you how to open the MSS composer and then I will, I will begin the presentation of the MSS by developing the general info section. Before going on the presentation, I would like to precise something. In all the presentation we will give you, we will detail the filling instructions of a MSS composer and the nomenclature to respect. This is very important because these filling instructions and the nomenclature proposed have been created to allow a good display in the Metapass database. So it's really important to respect this instruction and the nomenclature. 
So first opening of an MSS Composer. We have to download and to install MSS Composers on our computer. As previously detailed, three MSS Composer exists. One for primary crop named MSS Plant Composer, one for livestock named MSS Livestock Composer, and the last one for rotational crop named MSS Crop Composer. Once installed, click on the icon of the MSS you want to open. This morning, we will work on MSS Plant, Compo Plant Composer, so we have to click on the icon on the, of MSS Plant Composer. A startup window will appear as follows. As in many softwares, we find different icon icons in, in the upper part of the window. We have a new icon to open a new file, which clear all fields and create a new document. We have also an open icon to open a previously saved MSS plan composer for editing or to continue filling in it. We have also a save icon to save file or save file as from populated composer as an XML file. But be careful. Save your file regularly because MSS XML files are not automatically saved when quitting the program. You have also a render icon. This, ic uh, this function uh, allows you to generate a study summary in the form of a Word document. The render function can be a useful tool. It will generate a RAW file with all the encoded inputs from which it will be possible to copy paste the information directly into a new MSS XML file. Please note is that if you encounter an anomaly while coding on the MSS Composer, the anomaly will be passed on to other MSS XML files if these are opened at the same time. In such case, the render function can also be interesting not to lose the, the information already encoded. When MSS XML files and Word files are open at the same time, there is no problem of anomalies trans transmission. There's also an option section uh, which, pre uh, which is presented in the software with spell check feature and manage regulatory identifiers are found under the option tab. But before going on option box, it's important to do a quick reminder about three important things. You have to save your file regularly because MSS XML files are not automatically saved when quitting the program. To enter decimals number, you must use the point and not the comma. And if you encounter an anomaly while coding on the MSS Composer, the anomaly will be passed on to other MSS XML files if these are opened at the same time. Now, thanks to spell check options, you can select spelling options, you can select languages, English medical or technical, and you can also go on the custom dictionary uh, window. Moreover, the three MSS composers share a common library of regulatory identifiers. The library can be viewed and edited in the regulatory ID manager, accessible from the Manage ID button on the Options tab of the Composer ribbon. This brings up the following editor. It comes pre-populated with the following IDs, MRID for Master Record Identification Number, PMRA for Pest Management Regulatory Agency, PC Code for Pesticide Chemical Code, and other identifiers, placeholder ID. This is kept for backward compatibility. The top list contains all of the available identifiers. Clicking on an identifier displays its property in the panel below. Each ID has a caption, an agency, and a description. 
The show in citations and show in general info checkboxes determine whether a particular ID would appear in the corresponding section of the composer. To edit an identifier, the users need to select it in the list, then make the changes to the properties, and finally click on the update button. To delete an identifier from the library, the users need to select it and to click on the delete button, and adding a new identifier is done by first filling in the properties and then clicking on the add button. It must be noted that there cannot be two IDs with same caption and agency. Clicking on the OK buttons saves the made changes to the library and all of the current codes become available in all of the composer. This editor only manages the properties of the identifiers and does not change the values that the users enter in each section of the composer. We will detail this last point in the next slides. For the three MSS composers, so one for primary crop, the one for livestock and the one for rotational crop, the architecture of the MSS composer is the same and allow to fully detail each part of a metabolism study. We have first a general info section with general information about metabolism study. Then material and method section of the study must be precise and this section is composed of two parts, material and study design. The results and discussion is presented in another section. In this section, information relative to total radioactive residues or TRR about extraction and characterization and distribution of residues, about storage stability of residues, identity of residue in crop and the proposed metabolic pathway have to be added. The study conclusions are detailed in the conclusion section. And to finish with the architecture of an MSS composer, we have the appendix section, maybe one of the most important section of the MSS composer, where the different treatment group are detailed in appendix one, where the structure of the identified compounds is developed in appendix two, and where the distribution of identified compounds in treatment group is presented in Appendix 3. So, after explaining the theory for opening an MSS composer, let's do a live session with an example. So, I stop sharing the presentation, and so you see my screen. And you see that I already installed the three MSS composer on my comp computer. So one for plant composer, one for livestock, and one for crop, uh, for rotational crop. So first you have to click on plant MSS composer, the one we want to open today. And a new window will appear like this. So, on this window, we have in the upper part of the window different icons, the new icons to open a new file, and which will clear all available fields in the MSS Composer. You have also an open icon to open a previously existing MSS Composer. You have also a save icon to save the MSS Composer or to save as the MSS Composer. And you have also the render icon to uh, convert the XML file into a Word document. In the right part of the MSS Composer, you have also some buttons to, to uh, cut, copy or paste some information to modify the text format. And we have also two functions here insert symbol and build metabolic map 
the build metabolic map function will be described a little bit uh, later in the presentation. You have also the option function on the MSS Composer with the spell check options. So where you can modify the spelling options, the language and the custom dictionary. One function which could be really, which is really important is the manage identifiers button. So when I click on this button, this really edit identifier uh, window appear with um, pre-filled identifier, for example, MRID, PMRA, or for example, PC code. When you click on this identifier, you have in the upper part, in the below part of the window, it's caption, the agency and the descriptions. So you can modify it if you want. You can also uh, add a new uh, identifier. For example, we can say um, webinar, sorry, webinar number for this example, agency uh, NSES, for instance, and the description, it's the webinar number. And after, you can also tick the boxes, show incitations and show in general info where the identifier will appear in the respective section of the MSS Composer. So, um, and maybe just as a general, I would like also to present you the architecture of the MSS Composer. So for plant MSS Composer, you can select crop one or crop two. And for each crop, you have the general info section, the material and method section with materials and study design, the results and discussion with the TRR for total radioactive residue, we, with extraction, characterization and distribution section. Here, with tables of results, you have also storage stability residue section, the density of residues in crop and the proposed metabolic pathway. In conclusion section, you can enter conclusions, the appendix with the appendix section, appendix one, two, and three, which will be detailed here. And after this, the last, the last section is for attachments. So before this short live session about opening MSS Composer, I would like to go back to my presentation and to detail you for now the general info section. So <clears throat> after explaining the opening of MSS Composer, let's talk about the general info section of the software. After opening a MSS Composer, in the upper part of the window, different tools are available for copy, paste, for rich text formatting and for insertions of symbols for most text boxes. The MSS Composer must be filled in from information available in study reports. To begin inserting data, click on Crop 1 and 1 General Info Sheet. Then click on the Add button below References. Clicking on Add will activate those fields which define the citation. This reference field should be filled in with the study report number. Repeat the section for additional references. Sometimes you may have different study reports corresponding to the same crop. For instance, one study report per radio-labeled test material. In that case, you must add several references because some parameters may change uh, in the two, uh, because some parameters, sorry, change from one study report from the other. For example, author, title, etc., etc. 
adding an additional reference does not modify the other sections that are shared between the different references, that is to say material and method, results and discussion, conclusion, appendix and attachment sections. After adding a reference, different cells are now available for filling in regarding study report data. You can enter author's name of the metabolism study, date of the study, number of pages, study title, reference type, testing laboratory, and company study number. Proceed by filling in pertinent information by mouse clicking within the boxed areas designated for those parameters. You can type information from study report or you can also copy and paste information in the MSS Composer. In the reference section of the composers, each entry may have a different set of identifier value pairs. Um, to modify the existing values and or add more identifiers to the section, the user needs to click on the edit button. This brings up the regulatory ID editor. The left section of the editor shows all the identifier currently available in the ID library. Managing this library was explained in the previous slide. Clicking on an identifier in the list on the left selects it. Its properties, caption, agency, and description are then displayed to the right. The grid on the right side of the window displays identifier value pairs that have already been entered in this section. Existing value can be edited directly in the text box. To add a new identifier entry in the current section, the user needs to select it from the list on the left side and then click on the arrow pointing right. This makes a new entry in the grid on the right with the value field empty. The user can fill in the value field directly in the text box. To delete an ID value pair, the user has first to select it by clicking on the identifier entry in the grid on the right, and the left arrow button then removes the entry. Clicking on the OK button updates the entries in the identifier panel. In the next slide, I will present you the way to fill in data for general info section. In test material box, enter common name of the active substance and the company experimental name if available in parentheses. In identifier boxes already detailed previously, the users need to click on the edit button to modify it. In Box, precise guidelines used in the metabolism study. It's a free text cell but with limited number of characters. In the GLP box, you have to select yes or no, GLP for good laboratory practice. And if necessary, you can complete free text cell below. An acceptability box is also uh, presented in the MSS composer where you can precise if the study is scientifically acceptable or not by selecting is or is not. If necessary, you can complete a free text cell below. You have also an evaluator box where you can precise the name of the person who created or validated the MSS composer, and you can also precise the, um, the affiliation of the person who created or validated the MSS Composer. And in background information box, it's a free text box with limited number of characters in which you can precise information on the active substance, for instance. 
In product type and product use boxes, they are both free text boxes with limited number of characters in which you can add type of products and its menus. For instance, fungicide used as a plant protection product. And in, in the executive summary box, you can summarize metabolism study by typing it or by pasting it from an electronic format. Be careful, it's a free text box with limited number of characters. Uh, after this short presentation about the general info section of an MSS composer, I would like to present you an example with the live session. So I just quit the presentation and I will reopen the MSS composer we opened uh, in um, this morning. So. I will show you how to complete the general info section. So first you have to click on the add button. Clicking on this button will uh, make um, a reference appear here with citation hashtag one. You can select it and you can rename it. Uh, most of the time it's important to insert the study report number. So I will type it to the report number one, for example, report. Sorry. After this, you can see that on the right part of the window, we have different cells that uh, are now available to be filled in. So you can enter some data about author's name of the study. You can copy and paste information or you can directly write information in it. For date of the study, you select the date you want. For example, 12 July 1998. For an example, the number of pages of the study report 125. After this, you can add the study title in the corresponding box. So here it is the metabolism of 14C MTPW2931 in tomatoes. You can also add the, refer the reference type, sorry. So copying or pasting or directly typing it. You can precise the testing laboratory. So in that case, it's XXX laboratories somewhere in the world. And you can also precise the company study number, which is here unknown 16985. So here for the general information about the metabolism study. You can see that after there's the identifiers box we, you can modify by clicking on the edit button. This makes this window appear. So if you want to add a value for an identifier, you have just to select it, for example, MRID. After this, you have to write to click on the arrow pointing right. This makes the identifier goes in the right part of the window and in the value box, you can insert the value for this identifier. For example, I don't know, uh, 125 and uh, 456. Do not forget to click on the OK button to validate. If you want to delete an uh, existing uh, identifier in an MSS composer, you have to select it and to click on the arrow pointing left. And this makes the identifier disappear from the MSS Composer. Uh, after this, you have also the test material box where you can insert the name of the active substance. You have also the guideline box where you can precise the guidelines used and followed in the metabolism study. So for example, here it's 
uh, guidelines, OPPTS, etc., etc. For the good laboratory practice, you have to select if the study respects the good laboratory practice or not. You have a free text where you can add some information. You can also precise in the acceptability box if the study is acceptable or not. You have also a free text to add some comments and in evaluators, you can precise your evaluator name. For example, here it's me who created the MSS Composer and I work at ANSES. The last boxes for this general info section is the background information where you can add some information about the active substance. You can also precise the product type. For example, here it's a fungicide. Sorry, used as a plant protection product. Okay, and to the last box of the general info section is the summary box where you can copy and paste a study summary of the metabolism studies. So here, for example, I just pasted it. And be careful because the number of characters is limited in this free text, but it's a high number of characters. So here for the general info uh, section and how to, to fill it. And now to end this presentation about opening and general info section, I would like to show you a short uh, video um about the key points and of what is important to have in mind about opening and about uh general info section here we go So if you want now, we can do a Q&A session. So I think we, we will answer to, to the questions if they are during the presentation. Thanks, uh, thanks to all of you. Yes, uh, thank you, Vincent. We have a few questions. I think we may um, clarify uh, some things on the identifier and also on the evaluator uh, we have a few questions on what are regul regulatory identifiers? Where do the identifiers come from? What we need uh, for what we need an identifier and what is it is exactly and where can we find it? So I don't know if you can answer uh, this question right now. Well, I maybe I could add some information. Um, depending on the active substance you want to enter in the MSS composer, this active substance can already have some 
identifiers, for example, um, I don't know, an American code of registration or something like that. For example, it's the PC code. So existing codes are already available and you can find it on internet and you can add this information in the MSS Composer through the uh, IDs button. If you have also um, a number of registration for this uh, active substance or for this metabolism study, you can also detail it in this uh, in this function. Thank you. So uh, we will we can precise this uh, answer, but uh, after the webinar, EFSA will answer you uh, more precisely. We have also some question on the evaluator name. Is it mandatory to fill the this this field? And um, what to fill here? The name of the person filling the composer, uh, the name of the person who has uh, validated the metabolism study. Uh, if if you have some answer to this, it's it's not mandatory to to fill in the name of the evaluator, but I think it could be interesting to precise the affiliation of uh, the person who created it. Um, I think for competent authorities, it could be also interesting to say that this is this competent authority who validate the uh, MSS composer in, uh, for, I think it could be, it could be interesting and important for transparency, but in my opinion, uh, you can, you are not, uh, it's not an obligation to, to, to detail the evaluator name of the MSS, of the person who created the, the MSS composer. Okay. Uh, I don't know if we can answer uh, to all other questions, which are more, I think, uh, need more precision for the parameters you, which are mandatory and maybe we, we can uh, come back to this question after the webinar. So don't worry, uh, we will answer uh, everybody's questions. Um, I, I don't know if you want to continue this Q&A session on this uh, regulatory identifiers and general info. We have also some question in the in the chat. Basically, what is an anomaly while coding on the composer? <laughs> Hmm. Maybe we can publish this uh, this question. There can be different type of anomalies in the in the MSS composer, and I think we we will go through um, most of them in the in the next presentation of the different sections of an MSS composer. But um, maybe I, I just I can um, I I can made an example. Uh, for example, sometimes where when you delete a title of column in a table of results, sometimes this makes um, a, a bug and a problem in the display in the MetaPass database. So this can be an example for for an anomaly, and um, each anomaly will be will be designated when you try to import the XML file into MetaPass database. And if an anomaly occurred in the XML file. Uh, you cannot uh, import the XML file in the MetaPass database. So we will see, but we will develop this, some some kinds of and some example of anomaly in the next presentation. Yes, thank you. Um, we have a last question. I think it's uh, relevant for animal <laughs> studies. Uh, it is normal to keep the name. Is it normal to keep the name of report authors? out of the public domain for security reason, how will this be handled? I can let you answer, maybe I have a few answers yeah. too. Go on, go on, go on, William. So um, what we are doing now is to anon anonymize the studies uh, coded for animal studies in MSS Livestock Composer by uh, 
anonymize the name of the author. The, um, I don't know if other pa parameters are also anonymized, no? To... Any, we, we anonymize any information that could make a link between uh, the, the person who conducted the study and the, the, inform the, the information the name or sometimes also information on uh, impurities but this this case is is, is raw i think that we have time for one last question yeah we have this question um on how do we name the study name the example shows the current ca reference name now at the MRL manual, the naming of studies follow other approach. Could you please clarify? Mm -hmm. Maybe I do not really understand the, um, the question. How do we name the study name? Well, I don't know if this uh, deals with the study title of the metabolism study or maybe the name of the citation we entered in the MSS compiler. To, to answer this question in the manual we, we developed, we proposed to um, add the study report number for the, to, to name the, the citation added in the MSS composer to be current with the metabolism study we, um, we, we detailed in the MSS composer. So I hope I answered to your question. If I understand this question well. And maybe we have also a question about the number of crops in the MSS composer because there are tabs for two crops and is there a way of adding an extra tab for crops three, four, etc. etc. Um, for plant MSS composer, only, only sorry, uh, two sheets are created, crop one, crop two. So for the moment, we cannot add some additional crops, but we will see that for rotational crop, uh, it's a little bit different. So I think we will see uh, later in the, during the webinar. We are looking to, to your questions. I think maybe we, we can ask uh, and try to answer last questions if we have, sorry, we have a lot of questions. So we try to, to to get the uh, and to to see what we what we can answer to to this and so maybe one last question before uh, Gail detailed the last section uh, maybe we have this one it could be interesting it's uh, the question is, should the plant composer also be used for processing? That is to say, if a metabolite only occurs during processing. Um, about this question, uh, MSS composer are, have been created only for primary crop, rotational crop and livestock. But um, there's no MSS composer dealing with processing studies for now. So for the moment, this uh, uh, could not be uh, detailed in, uh, in MSS composer. So I'm sorry, time is running and we have to, to, to complete the, the agenda. So I propose you to, to go on the next presentation. Uh, this will be presented by Gail about material section of the MSS Composer. Thank you. Thank you, Vincent. So, thank you, Vincent, for the first part on how opening MSS Composer and how to fill the general info tab. Now I will explain how to complete the tab corresponding to materials and methods. So indeed, there are two main parts, material and study design. 
So to move on uh, on uh, this part, material and method, you just have to click on the tab two, material and method. There are two sub tabs, one for material, the, the other one for study design. The sub tab A, materials, summarize the test material, the test scrap and the soil type. Under test material, the field could be populated by directly typing information, for example, common name, cast number, a company experimental name, molecular formula, batch number, etc. The only recommendation uh, for this table is to respect the maximum number of characters. To add a radio label test material, we have to click on the add button. This will activate the field for data entry. Radio label hashtag one will appear in the white box below the add tell buttons. Upon clicking on the radio label hashtag one, the system allows you to rename the radio label molecule following this nomenclature that nomenclature that we, we propose. Uh, bracket radio label group uh, bracket common and the common name of the active substance. Next, fill in the radiochemical purity and specific activities if available. For this, uh, add a range of value or value and the corresponding unit. To add uh, the two dimensional structure, click on the pen drawing icon on the, of the lower right of the structure box. The 2D editor box opens as a drawing package to build the structure. The process that I will describe uh, below applies to uh, the 2D structure editor that you can find and you can find it in two places in the MSS Composer, within the radio label test material now and within the appendix two for drawing parents and metabolic structure for metabolism map. So, how to use this 2D editor to draw a structure. So start by drawing a fragment by selecting the pen icon next to single, referring to single bonds, and drawing your structure or directly selecting, um, or directly by select the type of ring that you need. Next, we can add a double bond by changing the bond from single to double. For this, click on single box, select double from the drop down then either just click on the single bond in the drawing you want to be double and it will change or click on the carbon hold down the mouse and drag to the adjacent carbon then release and then you continue to draw your structure next we can change uh, atom type for example, uh, carbon to nitrogen by selecting the periodic table icon, not here, but here, I'm sorry. Uh, a periodic table should pop up, click on the nitrogen and select yes. The periodic table window closes and then you may replace the carbon with nitrogen by clicking with the mouse. The arrow be used as usual to undo and redo, the white square uh, to clear all, the C and H icon are to hide or to show hydrogen or carbon atom, as you can see on the picture, and the one and two is to show the atom number. The, the T uh, is the flip structure tool to vertically flip the structure. And the last H is to, to switch from explicit to implicit representation. Alternatively, a smile string or inky code can be introduced by pasting in the smile inky box and selecting the draw button. After I introduce the smile string of the parent, for example, a structure appears directly on the 2D editor. To get started, a list of parent 2D structure uh, is available. Uh, we, 
And um, so the other option uh, is to, to draw the first molecule and then to copy paste the, the automatically generated uh, code, smile code of the first molecule to draw the second one. The parent structure, after copy pasting the, the smile code, may now be modified using tools within the editor. The unique structure may be represented with plus and minus chart. The four arrow icon allows you to move the structure and the scissor icon is to delete or uh, cut feature. Specifically, a label may be introduced in the structure of the parent to represent your radio label molecule. So, um, for that, we have to open the periodic table by selecting the icon of the periodic pa table as circle in the figure below. A periodic table screen comes up where you should check label in this example, add 14 in the number box and click on C for carbon, then hit yes. The periodic table closes, then you can add the uh, 14 carbon label to each carbon. In this example, by clicking on the carbon that you wish to add, uh, on which you, you, on which you wish to add the label. Not that for the labeling, uh, not that for, for information, you can see that the labeling is now contained in the smile code. Then click OK to accept the structure. So now you can copy paste the smile code of the first radio molecule to draw the second one. If you do so, don't forget to change the radio labeling seat. For do this, uh, you can just erase the radio labeling in the smile code. Uh, as you can see, L, LBL. Uh, 14. So, after drawing the molecule structure, we can continue with the population of the physical chemical properties and general test crop information table. The first table summarizes the physical chemical properties. For example, melting point, pH, log uh, the KOW. Parameters may be amended by simply typing. The physical chemical property tables contain four populate rows to assist in population. Actually, all tables in the composer are pre-populated with titles, format, and colon headers to make the population easier. However, there is flexibility built in to change colon headers and row. Colon may be amended by right click invoking a pop-up box that allows the user to change the text. The title of the row could be also modified by simply typing in it. And the right click allows the user to delete, to delete rows, clear rows, copy rows, insert rows, or clear an entire table. These same table tools apply for the general test crop information table as well. So now have a look on the test crop part. In this part, the, info, the information on the tested crop could be reported. The crop, the variety, the, the growth at application, at harvest, the harvested commodities, and the harvested procedure. For the crop and the crop group, to facilitate the reading in the database, please respect the following nomenclature crop slash crop group. The growth stage at the application and, uh, and at harvest have to be described by a two digit plus a unit. And for the growth stage, don't forget to add a space between the zero and the colon. Otherwise, the information will not display once the MSS XML file will be imported into Metapath. Then repeat this step for every tested crop. Regarding the test site type, select the right 
item in the drop down list. If nothing corresponds, choose other and fill in the free text field, but with maximum 50 characters. Please note that if another option than other is selected, the information displayed in the free text field will not appear once the MSS XML file will be imported into Metavat. So the third part is for the soil properties and the environmental conditions. The first time is for chemical properties of the soil using in the study. Um, as for other table, heading columns could be modified and parameters be filled just by clicking and typing. For soil type, a limited number of 50 characters has to be respected. To finish, you can report the environmental condition such as temperature, rainfall, etc. So now, after the presentation of materials, we will have a look at the study design. In this part, um, we can summarize the experimental conditions, the sampling, the method used for extraction, identification, and characterization of the residue. The first uh, free text field is to describe the experimental condition. Then you can complete the table use pattern uh, with the chemical name, application method, application rate, PHI, and so on. Um, and please, for sake of homogeneity, please use A.S as an abbreviation for active substance. Below that bow, uh, there is also a text box to capture narrative regarding samplings. Uh, we can uh, describe how samples were taken or samples were handled after harvesting and any preparation that was done prior to extraction. To finish in this type of study design, you could also describe the method used for extraction and analysis and the method used for identification and characterization. You can see that attachment depicting extraction may be added. You just have to click on attach to upload the file, uh, which must be an image, for example, JPEG or GIF file. By clicking on view, you can open the attached file for viewing. There are also two more text boxes designed for uh, extraction and analysis and identification and characterization narrative content. So after this brief introduction on materials and method, and to make it more concrete, we will continue to complete together the MSS Composer that Vincent has started to populate. So Vincent has already completed the general information. So by clicking, I can go directly to material and methods. Here you can see the two sub tabs, materials and study design. So for the first one, materials, we will complete with the available information, common name, the CAS, the CAS chemical name, which is 3 promo 1 n pyrazol 5 carboxamide the cas number the molecular formula just by typing in the row etc then uh, I will add the radio label test material used in the study. So for this, I will click on the add button here. And as you see, uh, the radio label hashtag one appear. I can rename it using the following nomenclature, bracket, the name of the um, radio label cycle and then I can 
uh, following the purity and the specific activity with the value and the unit. So the value, for example, 90%, specific activity 0 0.63 per milligram. Now I will draw the molecule structure. So for this, I, clean, I click on the pen icon here. This will open the 2D editor box. I can copy paste the smile code here and the molecule up here or okay. I can add another radio label test material, we name it. Mm -hmm. and then draw the molecule structure. So I can use template for common structure, for example, phenyl uh, cycle, uh, or I can choose to draw each uh, bound. So I can start with the structure of the molecule, As you see, I selected to draw, to draw a single bond with this pen. If I made something wrong, I can undo. As you can see, the carbon, I can hide or show the, the carbon and the same with the hydrogen atom. I could also show the number, the atom numbers. I can flip the structure. And I can also continue to draw the molecule. I can cut this part, for example, I can add another, uh, I can add the pyrazole ring here, or if I made something wrong to undo. And continue to draw. If I want to modify the type of bound, I for example, to draw a double bond, I come in this list, select double, and then select the bond that I wanted to change, and just click. Now, if I want to change the atoms, I will open the, the periodic table. For example, if I want to change a carbon to an oxygen, I select O for oxygen, Yes, and then modify or add the oxygen where I want. So now if I want to radio label the molecule, I will open the periodic table, select or tick the box label, add the number of, of the, the type of the radio labeling, 14, and select carbon, yes, and then add where I want the radio labeling. And then select OK. So 
So, when, as I said, you can also just copy paste the smile code of the first molecule that you perfectly drew and copy paste it in the and just modify the kind of uh, the place where the, the radio labeling has been at, etc, etc. So after drawing your molecule, we, we will continue to populate it with the table physical, physical chemical properties just by typing uh, as for other table, by right-clicking, you can add row or delete or insert row or uh, clear all the table. And for the colon, by double-clicking, clicking or right-click, um, you can modify the name of the headers. So in our case, um, we just have few information. Mm. The log the KOW, for example, 1.90. Um, this information is available at 22 degrees. You can add the unit and you could you could also add reference of the information. The melting point, for example, is in the range of 217, 224, etc., etc. So now for the test crop information, to complete the table, just typing the information with the crop, tomato, the crop group, fruiting vegetable, the variety that have been used, the growth stage of application, which has to begin with a two digit, a space between the digit and the unit, and then continue. The harvested commodities, and if available, harvesting procedure. Then you can select the test site type. In our case, we select other, and write in the text free field, which will be populated in the database. So for the soil type, I can describe the soil type. I can choose to, to write or to copy paste the information. As, as for other table, I can change the, the heading of the columns if necessary, etc., etc. If available also, I could add the temperature, the rainfall, different kind of information related to the environmental condition. So now I can continue with the study design. So in the free text, I could describe the experimental condition. And in the table, use pattern information, I will add the chemical name. The application method. The application weight. The number of application. The P 
popije čaj. Etc. Etc. In the in this free free field, I could add information regarding sampling. I could also attach the flowchart of the extraction by clicking here on attach. As I say during the presentation, you just have to use the GIF or uh, JPEG uh, image. You can also describe the, the, the attached file. Etc. Etc. The last free field is for identification and characterization. So again, I can copy paste information related to extraction and analysis and information on identification and characterization. And after that, you have finished to populate the tab materials and method with all the information related to materials and study design. I didn't prepare a video to summarize uh, this, uh, this tab and the main information, but uh, I can, we can answer to your question now. Thank you, thank you, Gail. Uh, we will try to do another process for answering questions. We have uh, keep, we have kept some question under the arm, and we will publish it and answer it uh, live uh, during this uh, time. We have to begin uh, four or five questions on the same topic, uh, which will be published now. Um, they are uh, talking about the possibility to import uh, structures or chemical structures uh, from another software, from other uh, drawing software or other drawing tool like ChemDraw or um, other 2D editors. So as far as, as I know, um, the, the easily way to do this is to copy paste the smile code. So if you copy the smile code into the editor, it will uh, import the structure. We have another question on the smile code. I don't know if I can find it. Uh, some people experience um, difference of structure, a little difference on structures by using the smile code to import the structure. Um, I don't find this. This question. But. While copying smart code in MSS Composer, we experienced that codes or originated from different programs generate slightly different structure in MSS Composer. What program was used for the drawing of structure in MSS Composer from the, from the smiles code? Or our market structure handle? So for the last question, or our market structure handle, I, I can't answer. And uh, also for the program used for the drawing of structure from the smart code, I can't also answer. But uh, yes, we also noticed some uh, difference between uh, uh, the in the code generating from different program. So that's why we we check uh, anytime uh, if the structure that are uh, draw correspond to to our molecule. And it's only minor, um, minor modification. Sometimes they are different in the smart code, but not in the, stru the drawing structure. Thank you. I will look for the for the. I will ask the EPA on the program used for the drawing of the structure. So we have also a few questions on uh, these parts and the FISCAM properties. Uh, since it's a long work to fill all fields for the FISCAM properties, 
So uh, how many times they have to be repeated for a complete set of metabolism studies? And um, do we uh, can we just fulfill the, this information once only once for an active substance and after this uh, having the this information um, do not repeat this uh, feeling and also uh, I, I, I link this question with this uh, issue identified by anonymous um, all this general information, <coughs> material and method, is already provided in Euclid. That material, basic description of chemical and structure, as well and the physical, chem physical chemical properties. Is it something that is recognized as an issue? So I published a question, sorry. Is it something recognized as an issue or, uh, in the overall process? So I think do we have to repeat the, the furniture of this information between Euclid, this software, and also maybe other, other field to apply the, the dossier? I don't know. Yes, for the moment, uh, we, we didn't identify uh, this, this point, this issue. Uh, Generally, in the study report, all this information are available, and it's not. It doesn't take so long time to report it. It's uh, more or less five minutes to complete the FISCAM uh, properties. Also, Gail, see if you have an answer for this, can you tell the appro approximate number of fields to be filled for one plant study element distributed from one existed word file? So this last precision, I did not get it, but approximately uh, I will say that we will uh, going through all the tab you have to field uh, for completing the MSS uh, plant composer. I don't know. I don't count. I did not count the number of fields to be filled, but uh, it's a quite uh, an important number since all the data you have to uh, you have in your study report have to be reported in the in the MSS Composer. But maybe we're going through the whole uh, MSS Composer during the day, and you may have a better idea at the end of the day. I think also we have some questions about the, the information detailed in the physical chemical properties table. And one is our, is our face chem properties mandatory? Um, I think that for completeness of the MSS composer, the the best way is to provide all information you have about the active substance but none fields of this table is mandatory but it could be really interesting and important to 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 fill in each uh, each box where the when the information is available um, if the information about uh, one uh, physical chemical properties is not available, you can precise it, um, adding, for example, not detailed or not reported or also not available, or you can also add a slash or an underscore if you want. When I think it's the best way to, to do because when an, uh, a box or a field is left empty, for example, for the person who will do uh, the validation, uh, this person will ask himself if uh, this uh, field has been left empty intentionally or not. So in my opinion, I would be in favor of adding not reported or not available or adding a slash, etc., etc. 
So here for the questions about the information of the physical properties. Uh, we have also, we, we talked a little bit about the number of characters allowed in some fields. And one question about how do we know how many characters are allowed in certain field? Is there something like a counter in the MSS Composer? So to answer this question, there is no counter in uh, the MSS Composer when you fill in information in one specific field. But in the manual we created to um, develop the way to fill in information in the MSS Composer. We add the number of characters for each boxes when necessary. This manual is on the EFSA website. I think it's uh, on the on the link uh, where you uh, can um, register for the for the webinar. And all of this information is detailed in this manual. Yes, I will add the link. Maybe if I take the, the, the question in the in the order, we have uh, the same question for importation of metabolic pathway. Uh, so this uh, um, software during uh, Vincent is showing you the the computer manual manual. You can import, you can't import uh, data from metabolic pathway, but the MSS composer will you will be used to build this metabolic pathway itself uh, by uh, using the value you will enter in the result table. Sorry. Maybe the, you have this MSS composer at Visory notice available where all information on the on the um, limited numbers of value uh, to be filled in a field maybe vincent you can retake the flow on this document i don't know sorry it's it's gay who shared it oh it's gay. Okay. Screen. No, no problem with him do not get it okay i just sent the link to the manual. William, can you repeat, please? Sorry. No, I, I, I was, I was uh, answering another question uh, during the the presentation of the manual. I, mm -hmm. I have also a question on uh, the possibility to draw stereo isomers. So I think it's feasible. Yes, it's feasible. And uh, it is reported also in the manual. So for that, uh, you can uh, specify it in the in the smile by by the slash characters, and uh, it's indicate the the directionally between the the connected uh, atom. So you could also uh, indicate it in the smile code. Uh, the chirality specification. Uh, this is mainly based on the um, at and the uh, arobas uh, symbols. So it, it's in page nine of the user guide. You could also um, present it the isomer uh, using the underscore to separate smile code in, in the in the smile code uh, address boxes. We have also some question about Euclid and about general information about active substance dossier. For today and during the webinar, we won't uh, be able to to answer this question because, and I, I, I will ask you to to uh, ask maybe for EFSA by mail because during this webinar we will only uh, answer to um, to questions about the MSS Composer and about the way to to fill in. So I'm sorry, but we. We we are not uh, we 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 cannot uh, answer to two questions about Euclid. Uh, 
Um, we have also a question about the FISCAM property and about the function to the, about copy and paste. I publish it. Is it possible to copy the whole set of FISCAM data from the MSS Composer entries of one study to another by one simple operation? Unfortunately, for the moment, uh, the way to fill in FISCAM properties has to be filled in each field after each field and you cannot copy and paste a whole table for uh, FISCAM properties. So, but, but you can copy paste information if they are already entered in one MSS Composer. You can, for example, copy paste the reference. One reference per one reference. Exactly, thank you, Gail. Hmm. We have this interesting question. And who <laughs> needs to provide and or create the MSS composer in the active substance dossier? Is is this the applicant or the evaluator member state? I can I cannot answer this question, but uh, I I I highlight like this because I I think it's uh, relevant. Maybe authorities or EFSA will answer this, uh, or my colleagues if they have more information on this. Yes, the the objective is that the applicant uh, complete the MSS composer and the authorities validate uh, validated them. As for uh, any studies. So, um, we will try to answer to the technical question. Uh, there is also a question on how, or if it is possible to search this database for a certain study. So I'm not really sure to well understand if you speak about the MetaPass database. Uh, yes, you can search for a certain study or uh, also in the database available on the website. Uh, related to this database, there is also an Excel file uh, where you can find the, the related studies. So yes, you can already check if the metabolic study that you wanted to submit or if that you have to submit within your dossier is or have been already coded or not. We have also an interesting question about the filling instructions. And this question is, are certain values have to be inserted between parentheses, for example, in this question? Um, the filling instructions uh, of data in the MSS Composer are also detailed in the uh, not the advis advisory notice of the MSS Composer we, we created. Uh, so that's true that sometimes, for example, in this example, some, some values are in parentheses, but in, in this case, it's not a matter and this could be, uh, could be, could be done. But for some fields in the MSS Composer, you really have to uh, follow the filling instructions. And I think we will go through in the next uh, presentation. Some fields have to uh, begin with a number, for example, and we will go through uh, in, uh, in the next presentation. Maybe I can switch to this question, uh, which concerning the test item. And if we can store in the MSS Composer a test item and choose it from a pick list when the same test material is used in another study or in another MSS. So as far as I know, we cannot do this 
but uh, I think maybe uh, by using the software, we could have some feedback on what is uh, really helpful or not, and maybe uh, an update version of the MSS could uh, be done uh, during the during the year. But uh, we have uh, had many updates on this uh, software, and uh, each update uh, is uh, simplifying our bringing a new possibility to the MSS. So I think we can uh, work together to make this more useful for everybody. Also, I have this question from uh, someone. Uh, I would like to know if evaluator can validate only general info. So until now, you, we only saw uh, we only saw, sorry, general info on material and methods, but the point of this uh, um, this uh, webinar is to present all the MSS Composer, and a really important part of this MSS Composer is the result and discussion part, which where uh, we can find the um, value, the results of the metabolism studies uh, by uh, the metabolites identified, the quantification of them, and uh, which will which of these metabolites will be related to the um, to the parents or to other compounds and to build the metabolic pathway is the main uh, main function of this MSS. So I don't think you can only validate the general info or just for beginning after passing to validate the resultant discussion um, part. I see some question, but I have no answer, so I, <laughs> I cannot uh, present them. I have this one I can publish. If tomato leaves were investigated, do we need to include fruiting vegetable as crop type or something different? So basically in a um, metabolism study, the whole study will be performed on tomato and we, you will have uh, different matrices which were uh, which will be sampled so tomato leaves but also tomato fruit and i think in the general crop you will present the tomato and you will then detail in the result and discussion part and or the study design the um, the different matrices like uh, tomato leaves tomato fruits or uh, washes of the tomato fruits so we will see this in the following of the presentation. So all the question concerning Euclid and Metapass, I have some difficulties to answer, I'm sorry. But I can still publish them and they will, they will be answered uh, further. Also, for this one, should the FISCAM properties for plant metabolism from GLP studies, which match section one, is a cross ref for, for the data expected? Uh, I think it's related also to Euclid, I don't know. Yes, for the moment, uh, the information filled in the FISCAM part of the Euclid section will not be reported in directly in Metapath. So for the moment, you have to, to, to write it also in the MSS Composer, but for the MSS Composers, it's not, the, it's not so long and uh, there is some, uh, some fields are, non, are not mandatory. For, for Metapass, the most important thing is to uh, really well complete uh, the different uh, radio labeling uh, compounds, the molecule structure, and as uh, William, we will present it to you, the result and discussion related to the studies, the metabolic studies, the tier R, the extraction and characterization of residues, storage stability eventually, and also the identity of residue in crops, and then to really well report which compounds are identified uh, in which matrices and so on. That's the most important thing. 
Um, we have also a more global question about uh, the general format of the MSS Composer. How to manage data if study is not fully meeting general format, I suppose, of the MSS Composer? Well, so the MSS Composer has been created following the OECD format. So that's true that if you have an old metabolism study, it's a little bit more difficult to fill in the MSS with, with the information. So try uh, to follow the MSS and the MSS allows you also a little bit of flexibility about column title about and you can modify some 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 fields so it's a little bit more difficult but you can enter this uh, old metabolism study in the in the mss composer so i hope that we answered all the technical questions regarding the this part materials and method that you understand uh, how to do a molecule how to use the smile code and how you can report uh, information regarding the study design, the experimental condition, the sampling, and also the extraction and uh, identification, the method used for extraction and identification. And if you are um, Yes, I think we have new, no new questions since, uh, since okay. several, several minutes. We're, uh, we are a bit uh, in advance on our planning, but a uh, few minutes only. And uh, what was planned uh, before the next uh, intervention is a little coffee break. Okay, well, therefore we can uh, take this coffee break and give you uh, the next presentation at uh, 11.35, so maybe Th you can... 35.40, yes? 35.40, yes. Okay, so come back at 35 and start and begin at 40. Can say that? Is it okay for you, William? Uh, I, for me, it's okay. I hope it's okay for everyone. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. So see you in a few minutes. It's okay. So welcome back, everyone. So I repeat myself for the for the other. I hope you succeed in to following this uh, technical presentation until now. And uh, we will in this session after having explored the material, the general general information tab, material and method tab. We will we will move on the third tab the third one, a result and discussion. And we will first see the two first tab of this uh, section, total radioactive residue and extraction. So if we take a general look on this section, we can see, so the third result and discussion, we can see that there are five sub tabs, total radioactive residue, extraction, characterization, and distribution of the residue, storage stability of residue, identity in crops, and proposed metabolic pathway. The results you will have to report concern only the fourth first tab, A, B, C, and D. And to complete this section, you should use the raw study result from the study report as a source of information. So let's focus on the first sub tab, A, total radioactive residue. Indeed, in metabolism studies, after radiolabeling an active substance and apply this substance onto crops, the aim is to identify the radioactivity into the sampled commodities. By quantifying this total radioactivity, we will therefore be able to quantify the residue level of the active substance or potential metabolites corresponding to the degradation of the applied substance into the crops. 
So the, this first tab summarizes the extraction efficiency, efficiency, sorry, and the TRR measured in the different parts of the crops, which are also named matrices. You will find there a first table. You will be able to fill the efficiency, efficiency of the extraction method data. In the free field below, you can fill uh, information on the TRR measured into the mat in the matrices and uh, explain um, how I've been or what have, has been quantified in which matrices. Then, in the last table, uh, you have to inform the TRR values for the various matrices analyzed. So if we look closer to this last table, as in the other um, tab, you have uh, you are able to manage rows and columns. You can right click on a row and you have to add as, any, as many matrices that have been analyzed for the TRR in the study report. To do so, you can right click on the cell to display the options. So by displaying the options, you can edit uh, the name of the row, clear the row, insert a row or copy a row. Also, you can click on the column to edit the name of the column and uh, to modify this to ordinate well your result table. In the column, the radio labeling is corresponding to what has been filled in material and methods, and they are automatically generated. But you may um, modify this name as you want. To edit the row name, just double click on this row to edit the information. And when all the rows and columns are well informed, just report the good TRR and PPM values in the table. I put here a little example for fulfilling this table before the live session. Taking the results of the study report, you have to try to identify the good radio labeling and the good matrix. The first result table here corresponds to the initial fruit wash, and we have informed values corresponding to the phenyl radio label, as you can see. We can also see that the second table here regroup the results from some of fruit wash, extract, and debris also for the phenyl radio label. Then we can see that the matrix analyzed correspond to the mature fruits sample one and or 14 days after the last application. Here and here. Then we therefore just have to report the values in the good cell by clicking on this cell and filling. As you can see, my initial fruit wash here, I have put the good values into the good cell with the good value labeling also for this sum of fruit wash extract and debris my values have to be put here let's then move on the second tab and the second sub tab of this section the extraction characterization and distribution table <clears throat> but a little warning before is that to enter the decimal numbers in this table you should use the point instead of the comma and also also always prefer the raw result from appendixes of the metabolism studies rather than those in the summary because they are often more accurate. So let's then move on the second sub tab. B, extraction, characterization and distribution of the residue. This sub types summarizes the residues of TRR the results, sorry, of TRR values in the different extracts. Indeed, metabolites are 
the active substance itself can be linked to an analyzed matrix, an analyzed crop. And different process of chemical extraction could take place to extract the whole radioactivity. So result of these extraction methods are reported in this table. First, we can see that we have two separate tables for each radio labeling. And this is to report the results corresponding to each radio label separately when multiple radio labels are tested in a study. So at the top of the table here, you have a free field to describe the result table. If you have specific footnotes or abbreviation or all information you judge necessary, you can uh, write uh, it in this free field. But coming back on the two table, the two radio labels are automatically generated by what has been informed from material and methods. If you remember, uh, we saw in material and methods that you can add radio labeling and those radio labels are automatically transferred into this table. You can, as a warning, rename the columns to ordinate your information, but do not uh, leave the head title empty because it can cause irre irreversible mergers of columns. Then, moving on the result table itself, you will be able to also, as it has been presented for the first tab, manage the rows and columns to well ordinate the column, or your result, sorry. The columns are also named, named autom automatically <coughs> for each matrix created in the TRR in matrix table we saw just before. And you will have to describe as many rows as necessary to present the result for the different extraction methods. <coughs> to do so, you will have to uh, display the different extraction method into the third column of this table. Also, always preferentially use the raw result from appendixes to fulfill this part, to fill this part. To go further on this table, <coughs> you have to know that each of this table contains a maximum of seven columns to describe the results for maximums of seven matrices, seven commodities. You have seven column max here. If you have analyzed for more than seven matrices, you should duplicate your radio label in the material and method tab to create a new radio label with seven, a new table, sorry, with seven empty columns to edit. So if I am um, I'm analyzing a wheat metabolism study, I should have a grain sample, straw sample, forage sample, hay sample, and if I sample this at multiple uh, day after treat treatment, I will have more than seven matrices to inform in this table, and therefore I will have to duplicate my radio label. To do so, uh, just report to the previous presentation on how to manage radio label and create a new one. It will automatically generate a new table with this radio label, with, a, with, with will be free, <coughs> which will be free and to field. When sufficient uh, rows and columns are informed, you can populate this table with the results in TRR and PPM, always paying, atten always paying attention to be in the good cell when writing. Remember that, the, so this number of colon is limited, so you have to create the second radio label test item to get extra column. And also tips for filling this table, the more than sign can be authorized, but the, using the less than sign will make information disappear 
when the XML file will be imported in the Metapass database. Maybe this issue will be fixed in the future updates of the software. Um, I will take just a few seconds to point out some issue with this free field text for footnote or explanation. So just above the, the table you fill the results, you have this free field. You may know that when you move from a radio label to another radio label, all the written information could be parasitized with some gibberish, informatical gibberish, and this gibberish will be transferred in the rendered world. So don't worry, it's a known issue and it could be uh, fixed in the future versions. Finally, I would like to give you some advices to populate the results in the table. Indeed, you should use dot for decimal instead of, of comma. Also, it is always better when the number of decimals is harmonized within the MSS composer between the table. And when you have an unquantified value, prefer write LOQ space the LOQ value or LOD space the LOD value instead of the less than sign, which will make disappear the information. And if no TRR is, has been detected in the report, you can insert an iPhone in the cell just to be sure that this field has not been forgotten and you know that the information is not available. In my example, I took the flow chart of the extraction of TRR in my tomato fruit. So first, I have to check that the results I want to inform correspond to the good radio label in my MSS composer. I also have to check the value is matching with the good extraction method and row name. As you can see here, my extraction, my different extraction methods are presented here and are reported in the table. <coughs> and therefore, when all is well ordinate, I have to report my results in the table. I put this warning again because it can be frustrating to lose all the data we entered just by forgetting to save. So save your file regularly and uh, be careful switching between two XML files. To give you a better view of these two sub tabs, we will move to a live fulfilling of the MSS plant composer. To do so, I will continue the, on the same file began by my colleagues, but for the following tabs. So we were in material and methods and we have just to click on result and discussion to pass to this section. Here you will find the first uh, sub tab I described to you with the total radioactive residue. In this first table, you may enter if available the extraction efficiency of methods used in the study. For my study, I am lucky it was 100%. To, do, to populate the table, I just click on the cell and I write my value. I also can move from a field to another with arrows, but is um, sometimes uh, giving some issues. Here, it was also 100%. In my quantitation free field, I can inform um, the residue results of uh, my total radioactive residue. So I can uh, use the summary report or my uh, re uh, executive summary at the beginning of the report, or I can describe uh, along my um, results. So here, the TRR value 
sorry, I will complete this. The TRR values was expressed as our substance parent MTPW29-31 equivalence in milligram per kilograms and determined as the sum of total radioactivity in extractable as surface wash included and an extracted an extracted residues as you may do not have the time to all describe you can also copy paste information from the report when the report is not too old and is not uh, just a scan of a, of a file so you can copy paste other information if you have access to this to well describe the quantitation part if we move to the table the table before uh, below we can see with my fruit tomato fruit sorry um, I have values for some matrices but some matrices are missing and it's a pre-filled version so I would like to show you how to insert a row to, to fill uh, three more matrices so I have three more matrices to inform I will create three rows I insert three times a row below in these rows I also have to describe what matrices is analyzed what were the timing and application and where what were the pre-harvest pre intervals and then I, I will be able to inform my results so I add also leaves which were sampled before three application but then with a 14 day PHI. I have also leaves sampled after three application, but after 125 days. And finally, which is interesting for me, the edible part of the crop, I have the fruit is also sampled after three application at 125 days. So I enter the matrices, I have to report the results. So in my 2D report, here we add a, a little issue. As you can see in my um, radio labeling, I have three radio labels, the cyano, the pyrazole carbonyl, and both cyano pyrazole carbonyl. Here I may have a merged colon because one of my radio labels has disappeared. But if I uh, begin from the beginning of the table, all is well ordinated. So I will inform here my result from the cyano label, here for my pyrazole carbonyl label, and here for the bust radio label uh, item. For this, my result was 0. Point, sorry, 0 0.026 gram per kilogram. It was the same value here, 0 0.014 milligram per kilogram. And for the boss radio label, 2.1.298. For my leave at 155 days after the last treatment uh, sample part, I will only have zero. Eight, 0 0.009 and also 0 0.009 and for my edible commodity the fruit sampled also after 155 day after the last application I will find I only 0 0.001 milligram per kilogram so it might be the LOD. 
so when I have um, informed all my results uh, for the basic TRR for all my samples matrices, I can therefore move to the second tab, extraction, characterization and distribution of residue, where I will describe the different uh, extraction method and the different TRR related to, to this method. So when the TRR have, has been sufficiently quantified, an extraction can occur to, uh, to extract all the radioactivity of the matrix. Here I have only results in my study report for the Ciano label for leaves at 7 and 14 days after the last treatment. So in my first row, I will inform the TRR. Remember that to create rows, you can write, you can right click on a row and insert row below, but you can also, you will be able to do this with a uh, little training, but it's not really complicated, to move with the arrows that will create and er erase rows automatically. My second row name is extracted residue. Sorry, I, I, I uh, don't, I did not fulfill this, this part. So maybe as it is to inform explanation on this table, I ordinate my table before uh, filling this refill. Here it's, okay. An extracted residue. Here it's my loss during the processing. Yeah, I have the total characterized or identified residue and the uncharacterized. So when I uh, well report the indication of the extraction method in this column, I can populate my uh, table with results and then I will I will be able to uh, describe or explain more information in the free field here. So for leaves at seven days after the last treatment, so seven days after treatment three, remember that I can modify the column name if I want. To, to ordinate well my info, my uh, my table, my results. Here it's well named. My TRR was 0 0.03 milligram per kilogram. The extracted residue represents 86% of the TRR. Then the unextracted residue was representing 14% of this TRR. After the processing and treatment, the extracted residue were accounting for 87, 87.8% of my TRR, which, are, which is corresponding to 0 0.026 milligram per kilogram. I oh, know it's the last. I missed the row, so I just can insert a row below to put this and to rename. So it's really uh, easy to manage the rows and columns to well ordinate your information. Extracted residue after processing. Sorry. Here I had a loss during the processing, so I can't inform this value like this, but I also, uh, since it's written that it's a loss, just put the, the, the corresponding value. Here, since the loss is under the limit of detection, I can write its 
corresponding to, as I told you during the theoretical presentation, LOD space, my value of LOD. And then, for the total characterized identified, that value is 45.80. And 0.06. 42% uh, were not characterized, which is corresponding to 0 0.012 milligram per kilogram. So I can fill the same information for the leaves at 14 day after treatment tree. So it's a little repetitive, but important. And you have to focus during this part to not um, display values in the wrong cells. It is necess necessitating a little, sorry, a little bit of concentration, but it will be uh, an important part when importing the file in the MSS Compose, in the Metapass database, sorry. So I just report my raw results. And then I will just show you that I have to do so for each of my radio label. So before passing to another radio label, I just can copy paste information or fulfill this information myself. The majority of the radio activity in tomato leaves was extract, extracted with uh, in, so you can put the parameters of extraction methods, acetone formic acid, and then describe the unextracted residue accounted for a maximum of blah, blah, blah. You can put information here. This adding free field will also uh, ge be generated in the render and will introduce your table. So it's also important. So as I told you during the theoretical presentation, I can, uh, I have my different radio labeling here and I have to put the information for every radio label. So you have a free template to help you to fulfill the metabolite fraction column. And you have to name the rows as you want to present uh, to present well the values. Here for the Ciano Pirazol both radio label test item, we have more characterization of uh, residue in multiple sample. Since if I go through the first tab, we saw that the TRR was uh, really bigger in this uh, for this radio labeling than for the others. We have therefore more information into the extraction. Um, I hope this uh, live session was helpful, but um, to summarize the important things to to think about during filling this part, I prepared a little um, summary. There is a summary of key points for fulfilling the first part of resultant discussion. For resultant discussion, you really have to focus on avoiding filling errors, since many values have to be entered in the MSS. Indeed, the more than sign is authorized, but not the less than sign. Using a less than sign makes information disappear when entered. You also can rename columns and ordinate them, but do not delete column adding. Empty addings cause irreversible merger of columns. To enter a decimal value or decimal number, Use the point and not the comma. Indeed, values with comma will not be imported in the Metapass database.
Knowing that each sub tab contains a seven column table, if you need eight columns to fill for eight matrices the results, you have to create a second radio label test item to get the extra column you need. For this, report for, uh, to the previous uh, presentations. Finally, you, you must save your file regularly because MSSXML files are not automatically saved when quitting the program. So don't forget to save. So thanks for your attention until now. Um, I hope I will be with my colleague able to answer the question you had, and uh, we will uh, go therefore through um, a live uh, Q and A session. Yes, William. Uh, with yes. Vincent, we prepare a document with all the questions. Okay. I give you the the hand. <laughs> so for as for the other session for for the results and regarding the question that you send, we don't have uh, the answer for all, especially uh, question related to procedural uh, uh, procedural question. But um, yes, we already answer Vincent, especially already answer to, to some question. For example, uh, can EFSA develop a way to use the MetaPass data to generate uh, pesticide active substance dossier Appendix J automatically? Or will MetaPass now make Appendix J redundant? And um, as I know, EFSA will develop a tool to automatically generate an Appendix J from the MSS composers. So Appendix G will not be longer um, required. Another question uh, is, is this one. Uh, in an older version of the composer, it was necessary to always fill Appendix 1 before filling the residue tables. Has this been changed? Uh, as we know, uh, you can detail the residue table before filling in Appendix 1. No problem to do this. So I suppose that it would be that it had been fixed. I hope my it's OK. Probably better like this. Maybe William, you can also answer to some of questions related to your. Yes, I, I will try to do so. Um... So for the first one, what if the study report is not available, not MetaPass impute can be generated? Indeed, uh, I think uh, you should have the study report to, to populate the MSS. You can do this with the summaries, summary uh, which are presented in a draft assessment report, but I think it's uh, in the timeline, not the, not the possible. If you're using this MSS composer to apply for substances, uh, you have to own the study report to, to fill the MSS. Also, um, we are um, with BFR, we are working on reporting uh, all available uh, metabolism studies into MSS composer, but uh, I don't think that you can fill the MSS without the study report. I don't know if you have more precision, but uh, I can go through the second question. The, guide the guideline does not require to give percentage of applied residue, applied radioactivity values in plant metabolic study. So such values are often not available. Indeed, you can uh, miss this information, but uh, generally you have the radioactivity uh, of your test test item and uh, the TRR are often uh, presented in the result part of the study report. Um, I just go check. Uh, 
I think you can uh, manage to inform your results without giving the applied radioactivity percentage if this if this uh, percent AR is corresponding to this, uh, I think you don't have to fill this information to report the results of the study. Do, do not hesitate to interrupt and complete me, colleagues. <laughs> <laughs> For this third question, how to add more than one row at a time when you need 20 or more new rows instead of adding 20 times one at a time? Uh, as I presented you the, the basic function of the of the MSS Live uh, Composer, sorry. Indeed, by just navigating with your arrows, like going down with the arrow, the down arrow when you're on the cell, is automatically creating uh, rows. So, maybe yes, you, you. yeah, maybe I can uh, give. A, an can example. You, yes, can I you share, share your screen? Yes, please. So it's this one. So as you can see here, I am on the last cell of my row, on the first cell of, of my slide row, sorry. And I, go, I can go down just with my uh, down arrow. So I can create uh, as much as row as, as I want. And I also can reverse this operation by going with my upper arrow back to this cell. So maybe I can show you that it's not erasing information already informed in the table, but just go down with this arrow and you will be able to create as many rows as you want. A little advice for me, from me is that when you create a row, maybe sometimes it's more uh, easy to fill also result data for this row, then you can create row after row. But you also can, as I told you, well ordinate your table by entering all the row before populating with results. Can I give back the, the flow to the, sorry, to the questions? Yes. The last question that has been sent. So we already discussed the uh, availability of the study report. Um, there is Can also this the table. Uh, uh, a question we asked ourselves several times. <laughs> Can you fill a table by pasting content into several fields at the same time? like we know it from Excel. It, this helps to avoid mistake by typos. Indeed, this helps, but uh, since the process of uh, copy pasting uh, an Excel table in this MSS is not uh, secured, 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 I don't know, it's not um, sure that data will be well being pasted in the table. So, by my experience, I you can't you can do this, and uh, indeed it can be helpful to update this function in order to gain time, if possible, and also to avoid some mistakes by uh, copy paste copy paste uh, values. Yes, regarding this point, William, there is another question on. Uh, do you have a raw estimation on the rate of mistakes, uh, etc., introduced by the manually insertion of the values? And Vincent, you answered something, but I didn't catch it in the in the Word document. Maybe you can. Uh... Yes, I can uh, say it one more time. Well, about the estimation of the rate of mistakes during the process of filling. Uh, in the results in the tables. For me and with my experience about the MSS Composer, the percentage of mistake is quite low. It's true that you have to be focused when filling these tables because it's there's a lot of, um, of results to, to detail, but 
it's maybe five percent of time so and maybe one value sometimes in in one table but it's it's really low so there's a there's a good correlation between the results detailed in the MSS composer and the one in the study report. Thank you, Vincent. Um, okay, William, do you see other question? No, so. For, Yes, this one we have already answered. It's about the appendix G. Mm -hmm. I answered also uh, to another question. Yes, this one. Thank you, Gail. Um, will the results be automatically corrected for extraction efficiency or does it have only informational purpose? Uh, it's true that there's a table about the extraction uh, efficiency, but the results won't be automatically corrected with the extraction efficiency. It's only for an informational purpose. So, uh, yes, there's no automatic calculation in the MSS composer. This one we have already answered. This one also. So there is a question about the possibility to copy paste the table from an Excel or from a Word. So now it's not possible to copy paste the table from Excel or from Word, but it's possible to export uh, the information in an Excel sheet or in a Word document. Um, there is also a question about the the sign uh, less than sign less than sign. Indeed, uh, we we it is re really not possible for now to use this symbol. Uh, indeed, we try many times to use this symbol, and when we import the XML file in the MetaPass database, the cell we, in which the value was uh, inserted with this less than sign disappear we have the cell is blank so the value is this is missing it's a loss of information therefore we we strongly recommend for now to use uh, the nomenclature we presented you and maybe we could have some updated as well on this uh, on this function in future version of this mss but giving the nomenclature like lod or loq is also um, adding an information on the value of your LOQ or LOD and do not really take much time um, since uh, on, you can you can sorry uh, copy paste results from an Excel file you won't have to modify just the less than sign you will enter the value with the good nomenclature I hope oh it was How are the solubility side residues from the NER shown in such table? For this information, you you have to add the row as for other uh, extraction uh, part and add the footnote in the free text field indicating that uh, this. Uh, Radioactivity has been released after enzymatic uh, uh, treatment, etc. I think that we answer the most of the question that that we have the answer. <laughs> yes, thank you for your, your question. It's really relevant and uh, maybe more because we can uh, take this as feedback to already update the, the MSS. Uh, I hope the this morning was uh, clear to you.
even if uh, it's uh, technical to present a feeling of uh, informatic software. And um, we will arrive to the end of the morning. We are arriving at the end of the morning and we will go to lunch and uh, we will give you an appointment to 40 to 2 p.m. Sorry for the second part of the result table, which are storage stabilities and identities of residue in crops. I hope that you are all come back and uh, enjoy your lunch break. So it's two, so I will start. You probably remember that uh, this morning we discuss uh, or we present on how to open the MSS Composer, how to fill in the general info and the materials and method. We have also, we have Q&A session on these uh, three topics. And just before lunch, William presented to you uh, how to fill in the result in the different table. And uh, this afternoon, I will continue within, the, within uh, this part, result and discussion. And especially, uh, we'll see how to fill the data on storage stability and the data on the identification of the residue. So, uh, as you can see, the MSS Composer contains a tab for storage stability of uh, residue. In this tab, there are box for narrative text and also a table with the same editing features of other table that we seen saw this morning. And the free text field could be used to describe the storage conditions. And in the table just below, you could add uh, as a summary the storage condition in which the study was conducted. So it's for the storage stability of residue and then the, the last tab of result and, and uh, discussion. And uh, this last tab is for identity of residue in crop. Result of the metabolic study can be summarized as a narrative text and also be populated in the table. As for previous table and as presented by William, as many subtabs as the number of radio label test material are generated, each subtab corresponding to a radio label test item and containing a table with seven columns. Either columns is filled in by default with automatic entries and uh, you are free to rename, uh, clear or delete or add rows. To rename a matrix, right click on the on matrix on the matrix X and rename the column. So you could name briefly but unambiguously the, the matrices you suggest to specify in the name of the matrix every parameter that is different from one matrix to the other. Uh, the part of the vegetable, uh, the sample vegetable, the dose, the day after application has here D81 for D after treatment one. Um, please uh, remind that you can rename colons but not delete colon headings. As William explained this morning, um, in this version of Metapath, empty headings could have a receivable merger of colon and this lead to an error during the import of the XML in the database. So to delete all row of the table, right click in the table and um, select clear table or to delete a specific row select delete row or to clear a specific row, select clear row, etc. Mm. And if you want to add a row above or below the selected one, 
right click in the cell of row located because located below or above and select insert row above or below. So as in tab B, um, if a mixture of molecule has been applied, only fill in sub tag mi mixture of. And uh, when populate when populating the table, we recommend to always start with the parent compound and then carry on with the identified metabolite. Don't forget to use dot for decimals instead of comma and try to harmonize the number of decimals and not to use and to use sorry n slash a for not applicable or not relevant, n slash d for not detected. You could also report a dash and indicating the meaning in the free text. As for the other table uh, in uh, extraction, characterization and distribution, please report the value of the LOD or the LOQ besides the abbreviation. So as I just said, all the abbreviation, sorry, All abbreviation and footnote should be explained in the free text. Uh, D A A A day after last application, etc. So, as a rem reminder, when populating the table, we recommend to always start with the parent compound and then carry on with the identified metabolite. Be care to not delete colon headings, and as in other table. Don't use a less than sign unless it makes information disappear during the import of the XML in the database. So now I will switch to our map beginning this morning. So I will uh, previously summarize what we saw this morning all together. So with Vincent, we saw how to fill in the general info, the, the author, the study title, the reference type, the company study number, etc., the identifier, the guideline used in the study report, and some free field text for summary. I forgot to say that Vincent also explained the main uh, tools of the MSS Composer, how to open it. A new MSS or to open the already complete composer and also Vincent and William say how to save your work and don't forget to save your work because it's not uh, MSS composer uh, doesn't be automatically automatically saved so after the general info uh, I explain to you how to fill in materials and methods material the different information on the ac active substance used in the study the radio label how to to add the, the radio label material how to draw a molecule and the different information regarding the crop study in the in the metabolism the last tab that we that I explained to you this morning is the study design tab with the use pattern information, the application rate, number of application, timing of application, and the sampling, how to detail the sampling and how to report information regarding extraction, the method used for extraction and identification or characterization. After that, after the coffee break, William uh, explained to you how to report results on total radioactive residue and how to report result on extraction and characterization. So now, um, 
I will complete the storage, stabili storage stability tab and the uh, tab uh, for identity. So if I go back to an empty MSS, you can see that in the storage stability, I could write or copy paste the a summary. And I could also put this information as a summary in the table. The matrix. The storage temperature. Reported in the study. The storage duration. In months or in days. And the demonstrated storage stability. So you have to do this for each matrix analyzed in the study. For this, you just have to add a row below or above, as you wish, and report the different information for the different matrices. So uh, after filling the storage stability tab, you can continue on the next one, on the identity of residue in crop. So you will find the different subtab created as a radio label. So in our case, there are in this map only two, <laughs> two, two substab. There is a free text uh, field where you can write or copy paste a summary of the result for each radio label item. I will choose to copy paste summary for the first radio label item. And then continue with uh, filling the, the table. So the title of the table and the head of the column were automatic, automatically completed with information reported in the other tabs. Especially here, you see the name of the radio level molecule and the name of the molecule. By right clicking, you can uh, modify the header of the column. But again, please don't delete column headings since it will lead to error during the import of the XML file in the database. So as you see, by right-clicking, I can modify the colon headings. Okay, so I will report information available in the study. Etc. Etc. Then I will list all the identified compounds, starting with the parent. The metabolite. The total unidentified. Etc. Etc. I could delete row. Or add row if, if necessary. And then reported the percentage of the TRR uh, and the concentration in the different sample by, by uh, 
by typing. Okay. Uh, you can go from a set to another one using the arrow on the keyboard or the mouse. If no analyze is performed, uh, you can add NA for not available. And in case of the concentration is below the LQ or add LQ. And beside, if reported, if available, report the value of the LQ. So if you need a footnote or if you use abbreviation, report it in the free text field. So after um, filling the for the uh, the information for the first tab, uh, you can continue. You have to continue <laughs> with the other one. So I hope it's clear uh, how to fill in the storage stability of residue tab and the identity of residue in crop. I prepare a very short video. Uh, Recreational, recreational video with the point of attention that I mentioned. I will share it with you in a few seconds. And after that, we will have the Q&A session. I hope uh, that uh, Vincent and William uh, managed to catch all your questions. Yes, if you want, Gail, I can share a Word document where I put the different questions and we also tried with William to answer to most of them. So I just try to share the Word document. And I hope this is in a good, uh, I think it's good for you. So maybe we, we can propose you, uh, William and I, to answer to your question orally. For example, William asked the first question, which was, is the number of rows for the tables limited? And if so, to which number? Uh, yes, so by, I answered to this question and uh, I tried it on my uh, MSS to create uh, the maximum numbers and rows. And uh, I did not finish until now. So I think the number is unlimited. It's limited to the data you have to fill, and there is no limit for filling this data. Okay, thank you, William. We have also a second question, which was, what is the difference between the two storage values given in the table of storage stability? So I try to answer to this question and in the table of the MSS Composer, maybe I can show you the MSS Composer. In this table, for example, summary of storage conditions, it is true that we have two columns. 
one which is actual storage duration in days or months, which uh, summarizes the storage duration of the samples in the metabolism study. And the last column is interval of demonstrated storage stability. And in this uh, column and in this cell, you have to detail the uh, storage period for which samples are stable. Uh, for example, I think in your example, it was 440 days of stability for storage. And I think it was maybe 300 days for the storage duration of samples in the metabolism study. So these allow you to check if storage duration of your sample is covered by stability data. After this, William, you also answered to this question. Yes. Should, Maybe, uh, yes, uh, take the floor. No, sorry, I don't know. No, 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 go on. So it's for Carla. Should all uh, milligram per kilogram Party per million results be as parent compound equivalent is this presumed. So, um, from my own experience in uh, metabolism studies, I I had to put in the MSS or other metabolism studies. Uh, the results are generally the TRR is generally expressed as parent equivalent, <clears throat> and um, we just recommend to uh, fill the table with value reported in the study report and not perform some calculation uh, related to the molecular weight of the metabolite uh, compared to the parent to fill the, the results expressed in metabolite. So I think do not, uh, do not per perform this calculation and just put the value you will uh, find in the study report in the table. So, so I, I can add so that sometimes uh, it would be expressed in uh, metabolite and uh, then you have to indicate and you have the field to freely uh, explain uh, that the uh, metabolite has been, the TRR is expressed for the metabolite only. And uh, this field uh, just uh, above the table is, uh, is also to fill this kind of information, of precisions. Thank you. Thank you, William. Uh, we had also another question, which is more relative to RMS uh, evaluation, where RMS should include their assessment or conclusions in the MSS composer. I tried to answer to this question and uh, for the moment, there are no boxes or fields in the MSS composer which are specific to RMS conclusion or RMS assessment. This is not available uh, for the moment in the MSS composer. That's why um, we, uh, dur during the work with uh, the BFR uh, to um, enter available metabolism study in and to and to enter the metabolism study uh, data in uh, into uh, XML files, we performed a new version of the XML files, and we named it uh, we named it as validated to make the difference between uh, the first MSS composer and the the validated one. But this can be an improvement of the software for, for, for the next years. Uh, William, you also answered to this question? Yes, so um, this question was about the storage stability and about the mandatory field uh, across the MSS generally. Uh, I, I bring this answer that uh, indeed in the advice notice of MSS, um, the, this field is not mandatory. However, I, I would recommend to inform the max information, if even if I know it's uh, time taking, to fill the max of information you have in the study report in your MSS. 
in that way we cannot lose information during this uh, transcription into an XML file and also maybe later we will we will identify that some fields which were not mandatory at this time at the beginning could be really helpful in the assessment and uh, could be therefore mandatory they will all be already filled so do not hesitate to complete as max the maximum you can the MSS composer also I think uh, I had I had this question if the RMS is uh, not in agreement with any data or need to change it um, that this value can be indicated in the table so as uh, Vincent uh, just summarized you a little um, we during our experience with BFR uh, validating these uh, XML files we are um, performing some correction in the XML and we are uh, version versioning so we are um, saving the new version with a name that can be identified if uh, things have been corrected or not or is, is validated it, alongside of this uh, new MSS composer we we do a Q a quality assessment report in a, in a word format in order to track all the modification performed or all questions we have on the filling of the MSS composer then we can um, follow modification or issues that could uh, happen during the the validation for the moment uh, if i could add something scale for the moment i think that uh, all the validation uh, uh, flow charts uh, is not yet uh, uh, finished or not yet uh, validated decided but uh, from what I know, uh, the idea is that the XML file contain uh, factual data and not the narrative conclusion uh, of the RMS or the EMS. And uh, this, uh, this conclusion uh, and this uh, validation uh, will end up in the, in the RAR or DAR at the end of the process. I saw we are we had we have few more questions uh, related with what we can um, inform in the table. Um, concerning the the question I just answered uh, with versioning, also we had this question that does only corrected files should be then considered. Uh, it's a um, I think it's relevant, but in case of uh, context of submission data, here we just presented the tool, and maybe uh, this question should be answered later. I don't know. We have also this question. Sorry, I saw on the uh, on the statement. It's not usual, unusual for PES to be extracted in several different ways using separate sub sample with example to release bound conjugate material or to characterize natural incorporation. How should this be handled in the MSS? Should each sam sample be entered as a separate column? Um, also for, for my experience, we can um, part partitionate the table by uh, letting a space between two rows in order to fill information for different extraction uh, method of for different identification of metabolites but I'm not ease with uh, with this part mm. i can present maybe i i saw that two questions were relative to uh, the storage stability table and about the reference of uh, yes, that's it. And about the references of the storage stability data, 
the previous question was the storage stability table is missing a column to put the reference for citing the established the established stability period so yes for the moment it's true that we cannot uh, enter this information in the table but we can um, uh, we, we 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 can uh, Tell uh, to the laboratory who created uh, the the MSS composer to to add some uh, some update to to the MSS composer. So this this can be added to to this table. Uh, regarding the last question, just add in the chat. Where should information about analytical method be presented? Uh, this this could be presented in the in the tab two materials and methods and uh, especially in the study design sub tab where you can report uh, all the information regarding extraction and uh, analysis method the flowchart the fractionation scheme and uh, you can uh, add uh, free text and it's the same for the method used for identification and characterization. Okay. I saw also a question about the less than sign and uh, upper than sign, which was, is it also not allowed to give uh, the radiochemical purity as uh, less than sign nine, less than 97 uh, percent. I think this field is detailed in uh, section materials and method in materials and for radiochemical purity, less than sign and more than signs are authorized. I just checked it in a, in the manual we recreated. Mm. Sorry, I was uh, reading the, the questions uh, about the um, how can I express amount of a certain metabolite below X? I have no LOD for individual components. I assume that uh, maybe the LOD of the parent compound may uh, be an information to give, but uh, it's a specific case. But uh, yes. I think, yeah, I think we we can find a way to express this. Uh, one of uh, ways to to report the value and to add in the foot in the footnote the the detail of uh, what uh, this amount correspond to. Indeed, uh, this table has to be populated as uh, table uh, in the uh, in the word document or in the uh, report studies as uh, as it is now. So there are this table to be populated and the free text to complete uh, the information to add uh, abbreviation and footnote. The, um, as we, as you can see, the the headers of the column could be modified, and the information in each uh, rows could be modified also. So it's quite flex. It's uh, give us it give you some flexibility on how to report the the result of your study. Even if the format is not the same as uh, those you already used, the information has the same and has to be uh, reported uh, as usual. Mm. 
at, at this time uh, in the the project with the BFR around uh, maybe William and Vincent we, you can complete how many uh, maps have been fully full and validated around the I don't know a lot and they always found found a way to to collect the information in the MSS composer to make it clear, to make it available, uh, to make to find they always find a way uh, to for the information to be clearly viewed in the MetaPass database. Yeah, yeah. Indeed, we have validated more than I think six hundred uh, maps until now and we experienced that uh, some issue could uh, happen uh, with 2d reports uh, dating from uh, the 80s and with a new 2d report how to indicate when conjugates are present but not uh, uh, not quantified how to so many questions are are coming when practicing and many answers could also come when practicing. <laughs> we we just uh, refine the notice uh, during the year, the past year, with our work uh, with the BFR, and we have this point that we always find a solution to fill the information and to to make it clear, and also alongside with the Q a report, the quality assessment report, that could give an extra information if necessary, but um, we will we will find a way to fill the field perfectly in <laughs> a few months. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> there is a question in the chat on how can it be indicated for instance, in the case of two footnotes to a table, which remarks belong to which part of the table? Just uh, after the key metabolite uh, A and B, uh, add the, the number of the footnote, footnote one, and then on the next row, it would be corresponding to the footnote two. And in the free text, you report uh, each footnote. A new question has appeared, which is how do we link the names of the compounds reported in table D with their structure? Uh, we will see this uh, <laughs> in the next presentation uh, with the appendix and uh, I, uh, I will detail uh, this for you. So if you have uh, still some question about the structure of compounds, do not hesitate to, to ask uh, them during the, the next presentation. But I, I will develop this later. William, do you want to I, I can to try answer to answer this question? I can try to answer this, uh, this question. Uh, is there a button to reverse an entry in the MSS Composer? Do you mean if you fill the, the, the cell and you uh, identify an error, you want to come back? Uh, if, it's, if it's so, I, I, I'm, I will try live to, to do this. It may be more convenient to see. Um, so I add a value here, for example, here, zero point. I don't. I don't think I can reverse my my action, but I may not have been um, well understood the question if if it's not that. But you can delete the, the I can delete the value. Just uh, yes, the value. I can delete the value. 
using nope. uh, using cell modification uh, classical uh, like editing a cell i can also uh, with using the displays of the row function with the right click on the row delay a row or clear all the table mm. be careful um and <laughs> i think maybe if i if i do this i can uh, use in the free field my um, shortcuts control z to come back to the previous uh, state control y to redo this but i don't think you can do this in the table it would be a little a bit complicated i think i hope i answered this uh, question <laughs> Thanks for asking. And um, I think the last question on the reported compounds and relation with the structure should uh, have been um, an introduction to the next presentation. And uh, I think we can go on this point to follow the agenda. So I, I'm going to let the floor to Vincent, which, which will, we will present this, this section. Yes, thank you, William. Exactly, it was a perfect transition to go on the appendix section of an uh, MSS uh, composer. So I will share you my screen and I will show you a presentation. so about appendices so for the last presentation we had gail detailed you the results and discussion section for the next tower approximately i will detail you appendices of the mss composer Appendices are detailed in chapter 5 of the MSS Composer and we will go through this section in the next slides. After this uh, presentation of the theory of appendices, I will show you a live session of appendices and before question and answer sessions, I will present you a short video of the key points to have in mind about appendices. But before going on the presentation, I would like to precise something um, in the next slides. To fill in appendix, we proposed to follow a nomenclature um, and, and filling instructions. This is very important, important because these filling instructions uh, and the nomenclature proposed have been created to allow a good display in the Metapass database. So it's really important to respect these instructions and the nomenclature. To finalize the um, presentation so of the plant MSS composer, let's talk about the last section, the appendices. So three appendices are detailed in MSS Composer. Appendix one, which is a summary of all a summary, sorry, for of all treatment group tested in metabolism study. Appendix two, which is a summary of all identified and or detected compounds in metabolism study relationships between active substance and its metabolite is also detailed in this appendix. To end with appendices, we have also appendix 3, which summarizes information of appendix 1 and 2, and this appendix is generated automatically. This table represents compounds repartition in the different tested treatment group and Appendix 3 can be modified directly. In Appendix 1 and 2, the same functions can be used. 
in Appendix 1, different functions are listed just below Appendix 1 title. The plus icon uh, allows you to add a new treatment group. The insert icon allows you to insert a treatment group between two existing ones. The new row is inserted below the selected one. There's also a delete icon. Uh, this allows you to remove a treatment group. And the modification icon allows you to modify a row. For modification, you can also double click on a line. But be careful. Um, unfortunately, at the beginning and in the last version of the MSS Composer, we have some issues with the delete function. And um, this function, we did not, we, we never used this function in Appendix 1 because removing rows in this appendix leads to bugs and to importation failure of XML file into the Metapass database. But in the last version of the MSS Composer, this problem has been fixed in last MSS version. So it's perfect for this and the delete function is operational. In Appendix 2, where identified and all detected compounds are detailed, you can also use these four functions. It must be noted that contrary to Appendix 1, the delete function, but not contrary to, but with the last version, the delete function uh, does not lead to, to bugs and to importation failure into Metapass database. So you can safely use this function. Appendix 1 uh, is a summary of all treatment groups tested in a metabolism study. In Appendix 1, the various treatment groups tested in the study are defined and listed as a test. To add a new treatment group, you have to click on the plus icon and Appendix 1 editor will open. A treatment group may be defined by different parameters we will develop. First of all, you have to precise the test cell in which treatment should be named briefly but unambiguously so that, so that they can be easily distinguished. To name it, use the first letters of the labeling, then the portion analyzed, then the applied dose if necessary, and you can also add the PHI, pre-harvest interval, if necessary too. Information in this cell must be separated from the text by an underscore. After this, you have to complete the number box, which represents the number of plants per radiolabel test material, you have also to indicate the PHI pre-harvest interval value in the pre-harvest interval box. You can also precise the application method in the application box, and you can also add the application rate and the number of application in the corresponding boxes. Be careful because for PHI and for application rate boxes, the value for PHI and the dose rate must be separated from the unit by a space. Moreover, I'd like to precise that fields tagged with a red asterisk must be filled in to allow import of the MSS XML files into Metapass database. To go on with Appendix 1 editor, you can complete other parameters such as timing of application, at which BPCH stage application uh, the application occurs. You can also precise the matrix of the treatment group. For example, in uh, our study on tomato, this could be leaves, this could be fruits, etc., etc. It depends of the of the nature of the crop in the metabolism study. You can also precise some information in the experimental descriptor box. 
you can add some information and to detailed uh, and to say that parameters vary uh, when um, sorry that is to say that parameters that when varied may give rise to a different metabolic map for a particular chemical and you can also add some remarks in the remark box which is a free text field to explain term, terms and abbreviations or you can give also some additional information in this box. Before validating and submitted a treatment group, you have to select the right citation, the right radio-labeled test material, the right test crop, and the right soil type. These boxes are automatically populated with data already detailed in the MSS Composer, so you have just to select the good answer to these boxes. As already uh, detailed in the previous slide, fields tagged with a red asterisk must be filled in to allow import of the MSS XML file into Metapass database. Uh, to end with the appendix one, you have to click on the submit button to validate created matrices and going on adding new tests via the same process until completed. Regarding Appendix 2, Appendix 2 summarizes compounds identified and or detected in tested treatment groups. Moreover, relationships between compounds are detailed in this appendix. Click on the plus icon to add parent or metabolite structure. Starting with the parent chemical for Appendix 2 is the best way to progress logically through daughter's compounds, granddaughter's compounds, and great-granddaughter's compounds when building the metabolic tree. After clicking on the plus icon, an Appendix 2 editor windows pops up with several boxes to complete. So first, you have to precise common name and com company experimental name of the active substance or of the metabolites. For chemical name, enter once again common name, but do not write the full chemical name of the molecules to allow a good display in the Metapass database. In the parents box, in this field, you can describe the relationship between compounds by ticking the boxes that correspond to compounds from which the metabolite can be generated. Relationships are specified for all metabolites except for parent compounds. And the metabolic pathway, which will be built at the end of filling in the MSS composer, uh, will be is built on the information encoded in the appendix 2. For the treatment groups box, you have to tick the boxes that correspond to matrices or to treatment to treatment group in which the compounds has been identified. The last section of uh, the editors allow the user to supply some expertise in coding when some difficulties in identification or drawing were encountered. You have to select none if no issue drawing compounds encountered. You can select expertly specified and assumed by authors for compounds that were not identified in the study but are assumed intermediates between identified metabolites. In case of uncertainties while drawing a compound, for example, the position of a chemical group which is not clearly determined in the study report, you can select expertly specified and specify in the decision field which assumptions were made when drawing the compounds. For example, for a metabolite, a conjugate metabolite, but um, you don't know where, uh, which is the site of conjugation, you can precise in the decision field a known site of conjugation. 
then to uh, validate the structure inserted and detailed in the appendix 2 you have to click on submit to validated created compounds let's do now a short focus on a function of the appendix 2 uh, which is the appendix 2d editor uh, we, we already talked about this uh, earlier uh, today. I think it was Kyle who detailed uh, you this, um, this tool. So you have to click on this icon to bring up the 2D editor. And after you have to follow directions from previous section to draw a compound. As a short reminder, you can draw a structure by copying and then pasting a, sm a smile code, or you can also directly draw a structure by using the drawing package. Then do not forget to hit OK to accept the structure. Well, regarding Appendix 3, this appendix summarizes information of Appendix 1 and two and is generated automatically. These tables represent compounds repartition in the different tested treatment group. Appendix three can also be modified directly if you want. Appendix three can be seen as an alternative to the treatment group section of the Appendix two editor for establishing the correspondence between treatment group and metabolites. This table is filled in automatically using the information available in Appendix 1 and 2, and you can link and unlink matrices and compounds by right-clicking in the cells. This can also be done by scrolling, but scrolling is very sensitive. That's why we strongly recommend you updating this table using the treatment group fields of Appendix 2. So here for the short presentation about the theory uh, of the appendix of an MSS composer, and I will show and present you um, an example of how to fill in the appendices in the MSS composer. So I stopped my presentation and I will share you. So the MSS Composer. So it's uh, the MSS Composer on which we work since this morning. Uh, you can see that in the different appendix, we some information are already detailed because I would like to uh, de develop a little bit on examples. And I wanted that the MSS Composer were a little bit uh, full of data. So I will show you, for example, how to fill in information for Appendix 1. So Appendix 1, as I already told you, is uh, a summary of the different uh, treatment groups or the different matrices tested in a metabolism study. So for to enter a treatment group in this appendix, you have to click on the plus icon here and you have the appendix one editor window which appears so after this you have to um, to add the information in all of these boxing following the nomenclature and the filling instructions we propose to you so for example in the test box you have to uh, define the treatment group so we propose to begin with the uh, first letters of the radiolabel compounds. Here it's for cyanopirazole compounds, radiolabel compounds. After you can also precise the type of samples uh, analyzed in the study. So for the first three lines, it was no, sorry, you have to propose the, you have to detail the application. So the application in the metabolism study is a four year application. So you precise it. 
after the type of application, you can also precise the samples analyzed in the study. So the first three lines, it was about leaves of tomato. And for example, here we can create a line for fruits. And after this, to make a difference, you can also precise the PHI, pre harvest interval. So here, for example, it's 125 days after treatment three. After this, you can you can detail in number box the number of plants uh, of plants analyzed in the metabolism study. It's not a mandatory box, but if you have the information, uh, we propose you to to fill in this box. So, for example, here it's ten plants. You have also to specify the PHI. So here it's one hundred twenty five days after treatment three so you can just put the information like this or if you want you can also precise uh, just the unit so days and do not forget to precise the unit in the um, in the value box after this we can also add the application method so here it was a four-year application and the application rate was about 150 gram of active ingredient per hectare. In the study, three applications occurred and in timing of application, you can also precise um, when application occurs and at which BBCH stage. So, for example, for this, three applications occurred and it was between 14 and 15, sorry, H. The second application occurred at 16 BBCH and the last application occurred, I think it was in between 53 and 65 BBCH. For this box, it's important to begin uh, the information with the number and not with BPCH because the import of this data uh, will not be operational if you begin with latest. In the matrix field, you can precise so the matrix. So here it's fruits in experimental descriptor, descriptor and in remarks field, you can precise some information and uh, abbreviations or other details. And before validating the treatment group created, you have to select the good citation. So here it's the study report number. This information has been uh, filled in in general info section. You can also precise the radio labeled test material. So please select the good radio labeling. Here it's cyanopirazole. For test crops, here we have only uh, one crop analyzed. So we can only select tomato. And for soil type here, there's also only one uh, soil tested in which crop were uh, planted. So it's this one. And to end with Appendix 1, you click on the Submit button to validate your treatment group and a new line appears in this appendix. So you have to do this task for all matrices analyzed in the metabolism study. Regarding Appendix 2 for now, Appendix 2, as a short reminder, is a summary of all identified and all detected compounds in the metabolism study in the different treatment group. So here I just pre on some, some information, for example, for the active substance MTPW2931 and with another one, which is a metabolite of the active substance. And this metabolite was metabolite INN79. I will show you how to add some information about this appendix so you can add a compound using the plus icon. 
You can also insert a compound if you want between two rows. You can also, when you click on a structure, you can modify it, clicking on the icon modify. And for example, I will do this at the end, but you can also delete some compounds. So I would like to add a new metabolite. So I click on the plus icon. This appendix two editor appears. So first you have to enter the common name or the code name of the metabolite. So you can type directly or you can copy and then paste information. So for example, here it's metabolite INDAT. Uh, for chemical name and when you have only the metabolite code, please encode chemical name box with the metabolite code. After uh, filling these two boxes, you have to specify the chemical structure of the appendix two. So you have to click on the plus I uh, on the pen icon, sorry, draw structure and a new box appear. So as a short reminder for this uh, Appendix 2D editor, you can copy and paste code smile directly in the first box and you have directly the structure which appear in this section. To validate the structure, do not forget to click on the OK button. After adding the structure of the compound, you have also to precise uh, the relationship of the metabolite between the previous metabolites and the active substance. For example, this metabolite, INDAT, can come from the active substance, but can also come from the metabolite INN79. That's why I ticked on these two boxes. After this, you have also to precise where these metabolites have been detected and identified. So in this example, this metabolite INDAT has been detected in all the treatment group tested in the metabolism study. So on leaves at PHI zero, on leaves at PHI 14 days after treatment three, in leaves after PHI 125, and also in fruit in uh, for PHI 125. After this, if you encounter of if some difficulties were encountered in the study report to draw the uh, structure, you can precise it in the expertise box. So before uh, to validate the structure and the compound, you have to click on the submit icon. After this, I also would like to show you a little bit um, how to draw a chemical structure using the Appendix 2 editor. So I will do another example for another active substance, for another metabolite, sorry. So this metabolite will be INM987. For the chemical name, it's exactly the same. And to draw the structure, so as I already told you, we can paste a smile code, but we can also directly draw a compound. So you have first to select, for example, the ring you want. So we can select, for example, this one. If you want to change some uh, atom in uh, this group, you can uh, already select pre-filled atom, oxygen, nitrogen, or carbon, for example. If I want to insert a nitrogen, I just click on it and click on the uh, ring. And so the atom appeared. If the atom you want to insert is not uh, detailed in this short list, you have to click on the periodic table to choose the atom you want to open. So for example, if I want to add a chlor, for example, I click on chlor and I insert chlor here, for example. 
if you want to add some link, you can also do this by clicking on this shortlist where there's single, double, triple, aromatic, etc., etc., link. So here we like to insert a single link between the previous ring and our chlor atom I just uh, detailed. Um, and we can do a lot with those things. You can also add another ring. You can also do another single link with these two rings previously detailed. And to end with this structure, you have to click on the OK button. So this metabolite comes from the metabolite IND80. So I only ticked the box here and this metabolite only appear in the fruits harvested 325 days after uh, application. To end with this, you have to click on the submit button and the new structure and the new compound appears in line four of Appendix 2. If you want to uh, delete a structure, you can do this clicking on uh, the structures and using the delete row. There's a warning message. Are you sure you want to delete this selected row? And you click on yes. And there's no problem of import of the MSS into Metapass database. And if you want an for example, if you made a mistake filling in Appendix 1, you can also uh, delete uh, a row uh, that you previously uh, detailed in this appendix with the same warning message. So regarding Appendix 3, uh, which is the last appendix of the appendix section, we can see that uh, filling in information in Appendix 1 and 2 automatically generated uh, information in Appendix 3. For example, we see that the compound, the active substance MTPW2931, has been linked to two treatment groups, which were uh, the leaves harvested uh, just after the third application and leaves uh, harvested uh, 14 days after the last application. Nevertheless, uh, the acti this active substance was not uh, detected in the last treatment group. If you want, you can modify this Appendix 3 and the distribution of the compounds in the different treatment groups directly in this appendix. You can click or unclick directly in this information or you can scroll also. But you see that scrolling is very sensitive, so do not play with scrolling because <laughs> it will be uh, really hard if you add, if you modify your appendix tree and you have to uh, check once again the distribution of the compounds in the different matrices. So appendix one, two, and three has been filled in. And this, once Appendix 1 and 2 has been uh, filled in, you can go on the uh, results and discussion section. You click on E proposed metabolic pathway and you can click on the build metabolic map. And if yes, everything is okay, the metabolic pathway of the active substance in tomato appears in this uh, sheet of the results and discussion and the metabolic pathway is created automatically once appendix one and two uh, has been filled in. In this uh, section, you have also a table below the metabolic map of identified compound from metabolism study with the common name or the code with the chemical name and the chemical structure with the smile code. And this is for the different appendixes. So yes, appendices are really important to, to be filled in and you have to be focused when filling this appendix because uh, this is really uh, the important information 
which allows you to to uh, to have the the metabolic map of an active substance. So, yes, yeah, really important to be to be focused on this. Uh, before the Q&A session, I would like to uh, show you a short video um, on what is important to have in mind about Appendix. So I will share my screen with the video and I will include the sound. It will be better with this. And here we go for the video. Appendix 1 summarizes all treatment groups from a metabolism study. Each line represents a treatment group. In Appendix 1, you can add a new treatment group. You can insert a new treatment group. You can remove a treatment group or you can modify a treatment group. Appendix 1 is fulfilled thanks to Appendix 1 editor. Some field must be filled in to allow importation of the XML file into Metapass database. Be careful, in Appendix 1 some boxes must respect filling instruction to allow data transcription in the database. Appendix 2 is a summary of all identified detected compounds from metabolism study. Appendix 2 also describes relationships between compounds. Little advice, when fulfilling Appendix 2, try to follow the metabolic map in the study report. Always begin with the parent active substance and after this insert metabolites. The different functions described in Appendix 1 are also available for Appendix 2. You can add a compound, you can insert a compound, you can remove a compound, or you can modify a compound. Appendix 2 is fulfilled thanks to Appendix 2 editor. To draw a structure, you can paste a smile code. Or you can also draw a structure using the drawing package of the 2D editor. Regarding Appendix 3, it's a summary about the detection or not of compounds in treatment groups. This appendix is generated automatically once Appendix 1 and 2 are fulfilled. In Appendix 3, you can link and unlink matrices and compounds by right-clicking in the cell. This can also be done by scrolling, but it's very sensitive. That's why for Appendix 3, we strongly recommend you updating this table using the treatment group fields of Appendix 2. So thanks a lot for watching this short video. Uh, well, I think before the coffee break, we have approximately 10 minutes of uh, question and answer. So we will answer to, to your question. Thank you. So I could share the, the different question. We could start with uh, the question already answered. Okay. So th the first question is on to have a bigger a picture of the table. So as uh, William indicated, uh, you can zoom using uh, the control to turn scroll with your mouse, but there is no way to zoom in the MSS Composer. Mm, I will paste it in grey.
maybe William, you want to to share your answer with? Uh, maybe I can yeah, I can represent the answers. Yes. So, but to, for this one, do we need appendix one if there are only one treatment group in the study? Uh, so as I, I, I answered, uh, when you will import your final XML file into the MetaPass database, if there is no treatment group, any treatment group created, um, when looking up for um, matrix in which the metabolite could have been identified, we won't have the information if the treatment group is not created. So therefore, if you have only one, treated, uh, one treatment group, you may have to inform this in the appendix one then when importing the metapass database all the metabolites and uh, analyzed and identified will be related to this treatment group and will allow uh, some additional searches on this uh, matrix or compound later also I think uh, that this yeah. one is in an interesting one. Yeah, you you identified that um, you cannot group your different matrices uh, within only one treatment group. So this question was about uh, do we have to separate the treatment group if the commodity sampled uh, belong to the same plants, come from the same uh, crop? Indeed, uh, you have uh, grain, straw, hay, or forage, which could be uh, come from the wheat or cereals. But if you, if it's assumed in the study that you can, uh, you have identified um, one metabolite only in the straw, but not in the grain. When grouping your treatment group, the, this specificity will disappear. So we strongly recommend to follow the the advice to create one treatment group for each sampled matrix and each um, PHI, then we can uh, link the metabolite with the good matrix. This one you answered, but I saw just in there. What is your best estimate amount of time needed to create a study summary? Uh, for example, with one radio label, two matrices, and parents plus three metabolites, uh, approximately one day. Uh, I would say that one day could be sufficient to, to inform this kind of study. However, I don't promise to you that the first study you will summarize in the MSS will only take uh, one day because maybe there are many fields that you're not familiar with today, but with the practice you can uh, improve. And I think a study like this could take half a day to one day. But uh, it's really depending on the, um, how, how, how can I say, the date of the study and also how many metabolites are, have been identified in the study. If you have many metabolites with conjugates and it could be harder to fill this information and also the appendixes so it, it could take more than one day i don't know vincent do you want to add some information on uh, how to to draw uh, or to could you add some information about conjugate, conjugate and how to report uh, this kind of information? Yes. Yes, I, I, I saw that there was a, a question about uh, conjugate. And this question was, how do you deal with metabolites where there are multiple conjugated groups, but the exact position is not known? Do you have to include the 9 to 24 options so for this? instance? There was this question. Maybe I can share my screen to, to show the MSS. It would be more easier to, to follow. Yes. Thank you. So I you're welcome. <laughs> I would share my screen. 
and I, so we are in the MSS composer with the appendix two, where the structure of the metabolites are detailed. So for example, for conjugate, uh, we can say that this could be a conjugate. If you do not know, if you, if the site of conjugation is not known, please just select one way to draw your compound, selecting the site of conjugation, and in the expertise box, click on expertly specified. Say that it's uh, an expert decision, for example, and the decision is that the uh, site of the site of the conjugate uh, has been uh, drawn like this, but unknown site of conjugation in study reports. And writing this information in this part uh, allows the validator or uh, the LMS or the other person who uh, will uh, see this info that the, the site of conjugation is unknown and that the structure, the structure that you drawn is an example of conjugate. But unfortunately, it, it will be time consuming to, to draw the 24 conjugate of a compound. So do not do this. It will be more easier for, for you and for, every, for every, everybody. I hope this example was clear. I don't know what was uh, the other questions. Uh, okay, the second question is, is it possible to have more than three appendix? And uh, I Probably after the presentation that uh, Vincent just made, you understand that it's not possible to have more than three appendices. Three appendices. These appendices are. Uh, it is in the all the metabolic three and the, are related to this appendix. The information reported in in this appendix, uh, where are, are used to to build the, um, the three, the metabolic uh, three. So, no, there are no more than three appendices. Mm. William? Yes. I'm not wrong, you have uh, your idea about uh, <laughs> no, the I preparation. Saw that, uh... I saw that uh, we have some uh, expert detective in the chat and <laughs> they are they are well following the the presentation so it's really good feedback for us um, <laughs> indeed uh, we we use for the for this uh, webinar uh, live session and presentation a node code map where uh, information are um, expressed as active ingredients uh, we we want to to insist on the advisory notice, which is uh, regrouping updated uh, ad advices on how to fill the those section and to what nomenclature should be used, and do not uh, take care about what has been uh, identified in the back screen of the presentation. Mm -hmm. But uh, you're right, and uh, we may harmonize the the treatment of the treatment uh, unit between uh, all the MSS. So the Graham active substances per hectare is the good formulation for us. Um, before the break, yes, it's time for a break now. We can answer to the two last question on how I can check my entries at the end. So you could check uh, the information 
by reviewing the MSS Composer or, or by uh, import it uh, in the Metapass database. And uh, William uh, will show you at the end of the day how to do this. And um, yes, we will we will see together all the all this information are reported in the in the database. And it's a easy way to to check uh, the data to to check your entries. The other way is to use the um, the rendering of a word document. So you could also uh, easily uh, read the the table and the and see the metabolic tree. And the last question is in your example for several groups, uh, for example, we does the pathway end up being separated for grain straw storage, and um, and if an overall pathway in which showing which matrix the metabolic the metabolites are reported in. And um, yes, I I'd like to to answer the same as the previous uh, for the same as for the previous question. You can um, you can see in the in the database uh, the result for each of the matrix. So there is the possibility to highlight uh, the the compound found in each matrix in the MetaPass database. So probably. We have enough time to to have a look on this uh, at the end of the day. Yes. So it's three and a half. If we do not have you question, maybe we can have uh, a break before the end of the presentation, which will be by uh, which will be performed by uh, William. Yes, and I think we we begin the last presentation, William, at three forty-five. That's yes, it. Of okay. course. Okay. So. See you. See you in uh, in ten minutes. Ten fifteen minutes. Have a good coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and we 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 will start with uh, how to render data. Yes, with the render attachment and with the conclusion. So see you in a few minutes. Well, well, welcome back, everybody. Uh, I hope everybody's coming, came back. Um, first, I would like to congratulate congratulate you for having made this this far today. I know it's a technical uh, formation, so it's a little bit hard to follow. Uh, this session is the penultimate of the day, so hang in there a little bit. So in this session, we are going to see some tools that are part of the MSS Composer, which seems to be an added value to the software. After this session, we will take the time to summarize again some key points of this training day. But first, we will see how to complete the conclusion tab and how to attach a document or a file to an XML file when completing the MSS Composer. Um, to go on the conclusion section, so this conclusion tab contain, or maybe, yes, I'm sorry. So um, this conclusion, this conclusion type contains two free fields. So it's the fourth, the fourth tab of the composer, and the first free field is to write the conclusion on the metabolism study. Filled in the filled in the XML, so you can conclude on the different metabolites identified, the validity of the analytical method, or other main element to to explain. In this second field here at the bottom, you may add some references of uh, metabolic studies you would refer to, 
and also different parameters for this referred studies. I will show you this in the in the, the live session. And it also can be helpful to be able to check uh, some details on the identification of metabolites in study or when some explanation seems too difficult to formalize in the field um, or whether you have the opportunity to attach a chromatogram or uh, additional document, you have the capacity to attach this document to your XML file. Indeed, in the well last uh, tabs, sorry the circle is not at the good place, in attachment tab, you, um, you can uh, add some documents. So to do so, this, this last tab is presented like this. So just click on the icon plus in the top of the box and uh, the attachment dialog box will open. Uh, note that all the file you will attach to your MSS XML file will be available and openable in the Metapass database when imported in. So after the dialog box is open, click on the fold folder icon to open the file locator as a classic folder. So like this. And um, when once open, you have to select the file you want to attach to the XML and open it. Then just click on the add button. Sorry, just here. Um, another tool, sorry, no, you can add as many files as wanted. Uh, I did not verify the limit of documents that can be attached. So you can ask, but I will not answer since I don't have the, the answer. <laughs> Um, finally, let's take a look to an interesting tool of the MSS, the render tool. Uh, in the main top of the software, you have this big uh, icon, word icon, which is the, the render icon. Um, by clicking on this icon, you can create a report. Before this, you have to name the file and click on save. And the software will begin to populate a Word document containing all the information that have been filled in the MSS Composer. But be careful. This is uh, how it's uh, wandered in the world. But be careful that at the end of this generation, you may edit your document like a classic Word document to ordinate the information. So here you can see a view of the render Word document. And one of the aim of this SM MSS Composer tool is to harmonize the way metabolism studies will be summarized in the submitted assessment report, at least at the European level. And a double added value to this MSS Composer is the first one is that we gain the capacity to import the XML file in the Metapass database to populate the base with the maximum of metabolism data, but you can also submit an automatic format of a study summary to harmonize assessment reports. Um, for this Word file created, when it's rendered, you should pay attention to the document, which has some modification required before being finalized. They, therefore, I prepare some advices or issue review. You must know that an empty report is also generated for the crop two table. As you seen, I can maybe go back on the screen. For this crop two, when you fill information only for crop one, a, um, an empty render will be generated for the for this second crop, but you can delete it at, as well. Also, as I told you in my first presentation this morning, you have some gibberish generated in the free field for text for table B and D um, extraction and identification of residue in the result and discussion section. These two free fields for text are rendered in the world and when you identify the inconsistency or gibberish, you can delete it as well. 
You will also have to try to clarify your document by deleting some line breaks that, that can occur through the document. But to give some uh, dynamism to this presentation, I will go to a live attachment and render in a live session. So I have my XML file populated. Sorry. Here I go to the conclusion tab. So here I can add or delete this conclusion. I'm sorry, it's not the, the good MSS. Okay, so I go to the conclusion. I can write my conclusions on uh, the study, the validity of the analytical method, the TRI, which has been quantified in different matrices. Also, the different uh, issue I could uh, encounter uh, uh, validating this study. You can generate automatically. So if I suppress this, sorry, it's not uh, anonymized. I can generate references, which has been uh, informed in the general info citation table. I come back to my conclusion tab and I also can add references to studies I would refer to in my conclusion. So I can add many, uh, as many references I, as I want. If I um, go through the to the last tab, the attachment tabs, it could be interesting indeed to attach some other documents, additional documents. So as I told you during the theoretical presentation, I have to click on this. I can open this uh, thing to find a, a, a different file. I don't know. I will uh, attach some study in the hazard. Study one report. I also can attach a Word document if I have two. So and all these documents which has been attached will be available in the MSS in the MetaPass database when I will import my XML file. I may show you this if I have the time to. The last function uh, I want to bring to you knowledge is the render tool. So when I have finished my uh, composer, so I have populated as many matrices as I, I can. Sorry, I just verify it's a good document. When I've, I have populated my entire MSS composer, I just click on the render tool. The render icon is opening this uh, box. I, um, I'm going to go to my rendered um, file where I can save my uh, my MSS world generated document. So I will give you webinar first day report. Clicking by saving, I will show you that uh, the um, a word document is automatically generated by the software and is filling automatically. So I will let the software do its job and I will try to show you how to, what can we do with our XML file. So sorry. So I can save my XML file. Webinar. Just. Uh, MSS. I save it here and I will show you, but uh, maybe it's uh, too early, but I will show you how to import it in the MetaPass and what could be uh, just quickly uh, the presentation of the data that have been um, informed. 
So to do so, I already opened my MetaPass database. Uh, you have to know that some um, user guides and videos have been uh, realized in order to introduce you to this uh, database and uh, more information are available on the EFSA website. So I just want to show you how it is uh, presented in the Meta MetaPass database when I import my XML file. To do so, I click on file. I will import a MSS XML file. So all I have to do is written. Here I have my box opened. If I go where I um, save my MSS XML file, so I can refine this webinar first report MSS. I just click on this and open. I hope this will function. If not, I will be embarrassed. <laughs> so it's importing the MSS XML file. And it told me one XML file was successfully imported. So how it's presented, maybe it can answer some question that have been uh, asked before. My map, my card, my XML file is appear is appearing here. And all the metabolic pathway of the study is presented. So you can see our parents and all the metabolites. Just to give you a little uh, exhib exhibition, I have my, for those who was asking uh, where can I identify or what is the utility of my treatment group, it's not the good nomenclature, but here I have all my treated group and I can, for example, click on one case to make up here the related metabolic to this, to this treatment group. All information you have uh, in informing the MSS are relevant because um, characterizing all this treatment group. So just to show you this metabolic tree and how you can play with the boxes to identify in which treatment groups the metabolite is relevant or has been identified. I will just show you a quick, quick, quick uh, look on the fourth tab. So the FISCAM properties are uh, presented here. So the, the most information you are feeling, the most information will be populated in the MetaPass database. Also, all results tables are presented in the two last uh, parts. The total radioactive residue in matrices is presented here, as we have fulfilled it. I don't know if you remember this. The leaves, the leaves and fruits. So all this uh, information are reported here and all my distribution of the of the um, substance and the identification of my metabolites are presented here so on um, with my feeling of the mss with my good feeling my good identification of the matrices i can refine this table here which are really important and presented for each radio label here you know it's a cyano radio label here you have the result for the pure azole carbonyl, but you remain, it was remained empty. And this one for the pure azole and cyano radio label is really fulfilled. And the most of uh, the metabolites has been identified for this uh, radio labeling. So you will find this result here. So concerning the mandatory fields, indeed the result and discussion and appendixes are really important to because these are the data which are really readable in the MetaPass database. I close this uh, chapter of MetaPass. You will uh, enjoy this uh, software later. I come back to my render documents, which I think may have been finished. So the MSS Composer is telling me that the, it done the rendering. I just click OK and I can present you this first render we made together. So I'm gonna proceed by the beginning. You have basically the same OECD harmonized template to fulfill the, to summarize metabolism studies. 
So as I told you, some little advices during the um, theory presentation. Some um, appearance or mise en forme has to be done by deleting the line breaks in order to make this more uh, comfortable to read. Also, all information are rendered. So you have your background information, the executive summary you gave, information on the crop tested, information on the soil tested, information on the applied parameters, application parameters, as you can see. So for my part, I uh, you, you may uh, bring some modification just in order to ordinate the best, the document, sorry, I didn't know. Here you can see the different structures you informed or the different radio labeling uh, specificity or purity. Here the chemical properties. Here you tested crop parameters, the soil type, and so the study design. And just uh, ordinate well. Maybe it could be updated in a later version, but it's some just minor modification to give to the rendered world to make him uh, the best. So as you can see, all my free fields are reported. And also my table for uh, results. The quantitation description, the TRN matrices. You can as well uh, modify your column in order to harmonize your tables. Uh, I, as I presented you during uh, the first session, um, my free field text just above the result table is also rendered, but as I told you, you can uh, find some maybe uh, gibberish or parasit parasites in the text. Don't worry, just delete it. Also, we have this, this data rendered. So it's, I think, a gain of time uh, to, to harmonize the, the writing of the summary. But you have some little modification to, to them, like this kind of words have to be expressed. And uh, after the document is supportive as itself. Um, when the render is done, I think you may uh, attach the study summary to the assessment report. I just go through the entire document. So as you can see, there are some specific, specific uh, little deleting to do. Here you have all the metabolites identified in the studies and drawn with the 2D editors. Here's the conclusion you made for the study and the different references you may have. The different appendixes are regrouped at the end. And as you can see, all the information filled in the MSS Composer are reported here. As I told you at the beginning of this render, uh, the Crop2 study generated automatically, but it's a template, so you can delete this. Oh, do not, sorry, and most, most problem. You can delete this and um, maybe uh, after you get a full clear document but i have some issue to delete oh. and then you have your file webinar first day report you can save it with the same name and it's clean and uh, the render is done so that was i wanted to show to you um, we may um, go through a little Q&A session to this part, 
before uh, going on the last uh, session of the day, which will also uh, be a time of exchange on different questions you had on the on this training day. Mm. Thanks a lot, William. If you want, I uh, wrote and reported the questions on a Word document. We can go through these questions. I will share you my screen. And for example, we have maybe five or six questions about the attachment about bug report about the conclusion and you have we have this one about a bug report when importing the composer files into metapass only the first crop plant and crops composer or the poultry data are imported all other tabs are not imported so i think that this is caused by the fact that um, no treatment group and no compounds are detailed in Appendix 1 and 2. And if I share you my screen about the MSS Composer, it will be easier. So you see that on the mss composer you have information for crop one and crop two but for example for crop two in our example no information was provided in appendix one appendix two that's why no import uh, of uh, the information for crop two has been done in the metapass database that's why uh, this is uh, like this for this question and for poultry for example we will see the livestock mss composer and in the livestock mss composer there are three big sheets one for poultry one for lactating ruminants and another for other animals and if only poultry uh, mss composer poultry sheets are detailed uh, only the information for poultry will be imported in the MSS Composer. But we will see this uh, information and this uh, on uh, Thursday, on Wednesday, sorry. Uh, we had so a second question, which are the required documents to be attached under attachments? Maybe William. Do you mm. want to answer this question? I can try, but uh, I, I will maybe disappoint the, the asker. Uh, I don't know if uh, they have they are required documents to be attached. I think uh, it's for completion and for transparency. Uh, I was speaking about uh, chromatograms that could be interesting to present. But uh, maybe if you have a specific addenda to one study report that is not uh, taking into account in citations, you can attach this or additional uh, data on the study. But there are no requirements uh, to attach files today. Mm. Thank you. No, oh, no, entries are not saved. Uh, sorry, I, I was looking at the question. Where is the server cloud located where the entries are saved? And in which case can I suddenly be disconnected and entries be, be lost? Uh, we are working at a local level. Um, and the database is uh, available on download but for xml file you have no cloud located uh, storage possible uh, no entries are saved so if you don't save you lost your work 
but uh, indeed uh, you cannot be disconnected from the server since there are no server i think but uh, maybe it's uh, at a level i i don't know <laughs> maybe it's uh, at a euclid level no. so for me for the mss composer since you work in local uh, local area you will not be disconnected but you just can the the mistake we are we have already done is that we want to switch to another XML file to check some things, but we did not we did not save our first XML before switching before opening another one, and there is no way to come back to the previous version without loss, losing ev everything. So, is my answer. <laughs> Gael, you answered to another question directly in the chat about bugs. Do you want to take the lead about this? Yes, uh, just to indicate that uh, the, the different uh, bug could be, or well, some some would be would be improved in the in the future, and. Uh, also, that uh, um, but could be um, could be notified in the Euclid backlog, and uh, this backlog could be used to identify the the, the main issues and uh, the main bugs that have to be uh, fixed, and the main improvement regarding the MSS Composer. So thank you. I think we also answered to another question related to report and bugs. Is there an established way to report and bugs? Uh, I think that uh, EFSA will give you the detailed information on the on this Euclid backlog. Uh, so here are the questions I inserted in the in the word document but i think some questions also appeared in the chat since i created the word document so maybe we can go through mm -hmm. and can answer to this question there is a question about the vendor what about changes in the MSS Composer once the render was created? Is there a new render to be created? Is it possible to add some information in the render? Oh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. Is it possible to add some information in the render which are then not included in the MSS Composer? As you see, the render is a Word document, so you can always modify the Word document, but this modification will not be uh, implemented in the MSS Composer. And uh, on the other side, if you modify something in the MSS Composer, but if you don't uh, run for a new document, uh, the, the, the Word document won't be modified. Mm. Uh, maybe I have one I can answer is that for the minimum or recommended compute specification to allow the software to perform effectively. Um, for the MSS Composer, the software is light, pretty light, and it do not require too much processing uh, performance to work. Uh, however, uh, for the MetaPass database, since uh, many data could be managed uh, loading a database in this software, uh, it could happen that uh, some time interval uh, before loading the map uh, could happen, but it's really not uh, greedy on the computer performance. It's a light software. And yes, to insist on the modification of uh, render when you have 
already render the document in Word. The main modification, which are the key modification on the data, the result, etc., should be done in the MSS in order to could uh, track this uh, modification and have this on the XML file as well. Um, I don't think for the will the XML file will be made publicly available. I don't think the XML file will be available. Uh, however, I think the uh, the aim of uh, populating the database MetaPass is to um, give this uh, public to use, but I am not sure of this. Um, if I'm not wrong, the, the database uh, is uh, publicly, but not the XML file, not the details of the studies. Uh, Yes, I think that EFSA will answer to this question uh, tomorrow or in a few days, in the, in the coming days. We have, Vincent speaking, we have an interesting question about the metabolic map. Can the metabolic map cope when metabolites are in equilibrium and reaction can go in both reaction? And if you don't know precisely how metabolites form from each other, perhaps a hypothesis intermediate that wasn't actually identified. Uh, for equilibrium reactions, you you can detail this in the appendix two uh, editor because you can select the parent compound of a metabolite. So if one metabolite also can also give the active substance through an equilibrium, you can also detail this. So this can uh, be uh, effective in the MSS composer. And for metabolites uh, where you don't know precisely the structure, you can also detail this in um, the MSS composer in the appendix two. And if you suppose that there's an intermediate compound not identified between the active substance and the metabolite, you can also detail this in the appendix two, and you can precise that uh, this compound has been assumed as an intermediate between the, the two compounds, the active substance and the metabolite. So you, you, can, uh, you can do this in, uh, in appendix two if you want. For all the questions uh, related to what have to be submitted, uh, what have to be um, expected or um, mandatory, please, uh, EFSA, we will uh, answer to, to this question. Uh, I hope that we answer of most of the question regarding how to populate the MSS Composer, how to, to entry the data, how to to manage with this new format on how to to summarize the uh, metabolism data but yes for all the questions related to the um, the sanitization the publicity available of the data uh, EFSA will answer to you very quickly uh, so if you're okay, we can focus on the MSS composer on MSS composer question, technical uh, question. Um, it doesn't mean that these questions are not uh, <laughs> relevant, but uh, unfortunately, we don't have the the answer. So maybe if we if we are done with the um, this part of this section uh, on attachment conclusion and render, we can go through the last uh, session of the day. 
uh, I will uh, present you uh, some, maybe some things I get from this training day, but not for the last session. <laughs> and um, then we will go through another live Q&A session on the MetaPass Composer, an MSS Composer, sorry, until uh, 5 p.m. So we we will have the time to exchange a little after this presentation. Um, sorry, up. So to conclude on this day, um, I prepared just some five slides to recap. And also, I would like to give you my view on uh, MSS and MetaPass and also Euclid, but uh, I don't uh, have some view on Euclid, but on MetaPass and MSS Composer tool. Uh, since we worked on uh, many cards with the BFR and we validate them, um, we have identified that these MSS Composers are a good tool for an efficient quality control. So since we can validate with uh, validate the different entries of the MSS and after practicing, we know how, what fields are really important and some mistakes are highlighted in our eyes by uh, validating the, the MSS. It's a, I can tell it's an efficient quality control tool. Also, the MSS Composer uh, is uh, well as an harmonized OCD, OECD template to harmonize also submission and, um, and uh, the structure of documents will ease also uh, the assessments between European countries or between uh, different authorities. The, um, this uh, MSS are part of the electronic data submission by registrants. So since we we are going more and more to a digital way of life, uh, it's not a surprise to submit this data electronically. And also it will allow us to do some metabolic simulation and prediction with the MetaPass database. It's also uh, well for the risk assessment that can be improved uh, with the use of these tools. Indeed, uh, you can see that generating most, uh, more data on the metabolism and grouping this data will be allowed us to facilitate the risk assessment to derivate more precise residue definition or more relevant and uh, to perform uh, aggregate risk assessment. Also, it uh, will be helpful to improve the hazard identification based on QSA uh, complementarity uh, using this uh, metabolic pathway and using function to search uh, common metabolites between uh, crops and livestock will be uh, really helpful to, to the hazard identification. The aim is also by uh, creating um, models to reduce animal testing and um, so the guidelines to the requirements. But it's uh, first a streamlined information flow between the industry and the regulators. And if we all going through this way with enthusiasm, we will uh, work in a new workflow. And uh, I think it could be a really good improvement for the assessment. Um, if I can go some to, through some points I identified in the day, maybe not exhaustive, maybe only relevant to me, uh, I, I would say to to give you confidence using these tools that the more you practice, practice the easiest the tool will become. Indeed, you have really many specificities to each tab, to each mode of uh, functionment, to each nomenclature, but uh, it will become easier with the practice. Uh, the most of the time, you don't have to create or to invent things. You easy, easily find the correct information to fill in, in the study report of the metabolism study. 
Um, along the session of formation, the MSS advisory notice, which has been prepared by, by our team, will explain many things concerning um, the mandatory field or not, or which field have limited number of characters, or and also nomenclature to harmonize the feeling. All the information we have noticed during our practice of this MSS composer are put in the advisory notice. There are also some explanations on the way to present conjugates or the way to, to speak about intermediate that which has, has not been identified but are known to be an intermediate of, uh, of the transformation. So all is explained in the advisory not notice and this notice is as well updatable since uh, we can uh, add some information if uh, the feedback allows us. Um, for all these uh, FISCAM properties and the repeated characteristic between Euclid and MSS Composer, I cannot help you, but I uh, ensure you that our colleague of EFSA will be take a uh, look carefully to your question and will answer, answer this precisely. For all the questions related to the number of possible crops in an XML file, uh, please note that the, this first day of uh, training was about the plant composer, so metabolism studies in one crop generally, and it's rare to find two or three crops in the metabolic study on one crop. But indeed, you know that you can have many crops in a metabolic study in rotational crops, at least three. And uh, in this two MSS composer for rotational crop and livestock will be presented on Wednesday. And the specificities of this MSS will be presented to you. Um, particularly the fact that you can have more tab, more crop to fill, or more different or different species to fill. Uh, also, I I would like to ensure you that question left and answer will be dealt uh, so with later by EFSA with our support. Uh, concerning, I I I remember some question on the um, the fact that you can't import structure from ChemDraws or other software. So you can use the smile cut to copy paste in the 2D editors which import the structure, but maybe we we will follow the, how, how can be done on this uh, importation. Also, I would like to, rem to remind that the SMSS should be completed by the applicant and has to be validated by authorities. So that's a few points I wanted to insist on. Maybe uh, my colleagues have noticed some points to remember to you, to remind to you. Or maybe we can go to through uh, another Q&A session until uh, we end to answer all, all your questions. So to do so, maybe I, I just leave this PowerPoint and we can and we can summarize together some points you would insist on. Maybe I think we had a comment about uh, the number of XML file and the relationship with the metabolism study report and maybe we can precise that a metabolism study should be detailed in one MSS XML files. So one metabolism study equal one XML file. So maybe we can precise this. Uh, as you say, already said, uh, William, for rotational crop that we will see on Wednesday, uh as three crops are tested in uh one xml file for this rotational crop we can have three different uh metabolic pathway depending on the rotational crop tested um and 
I just checked the comment or answers you asked. Uh, we have an, an, interesting, an interesting question about what prediction will you do with the MetaPass database, with the data? Will you predict pass rate and residue levels? Really interesting question. Uh, I think this MetaPass database can be a topic for maybe a future webinar or a future formation. But uh, yes, the aim of, Met of uh, the MetaPass database is to uh, look forward common metabolites between uh, different uh, active substances. If we, for also um, a specific active substance, if you have different metabolism study, you can also uh, compare this uh, the metabolic uh, pathway between uh, this uh, this metabolism studies so you can this this can be a tool to help you in uh, proposing a, a residue definition or to 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 look forward common metabolites this this tool has several functions which can help you in your future assessment for the active substance dossier so Yes, it could be interesting to to develop a little bit more of this in a, maybe in a future future formation. And we also created some videos about the way to use uh, MetaPass. So this is available on the FSI website. So do not hesitate to to look at it if you if you are interested. Yeah, maybe to complete on the prediction, uh, I would introduce the fact that if maybe you have uh, entered this uh, data on the livestock metabolism study with, 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 with one substance and you have the metabolic pathway of this substance uh, in, the, in your poultry, for example, imagine um, a new active substance which share uh, enormous simili similarity with the a previous uh, tested compound, we can uh, make assumption on um, maybe uh, its comportment in the in the poultry. Maybe it will follow uh, some same metabolic pathway. And from our experience, if I can show that uh, some types of molecules are um, following the same pathway in a livestock, maybe it could help that without performing a livestock metabolism study with this new substance, just comparing it with the structure that are already informed in our MetaPass database will allow us maybe to identify some predicted metabolites. After this, it's not 100% uh, sure that it will uh, occur like this. Another, um, no residue levels uh, to be predicted, but Imagine um, you want to identify uh, cumulate risk to uh, metabolite. You have uh, identified uh, that uh, in your wheat grain, uh, uh, after applying this substance, you have one metabolite which is a majoritary and a totally other active substance is also giving the same metabolite uh, majoritary in the wheat grain then performing a cumulative assessment to the exposure to the wheat grain to the active substance you could refine this to by taking into account that the same metabolite has been found for two different active substances in the same matrix and maybe take it into account for the exposure calculation so many perspectives are possible with the with this uh, database and I hope uh, many will uh, be discovered too. Mm. Other question we have? For now, uh, oui. <laughs> So William and I uh, don't have the, the answer regarding the connection between MetaPass and the QSAR toolbox. 
just know that Metapass is included in the QSR toolbox, but uh, for the moment we can't use Metapass for prediction. So I'm sure that we didn't answer to all of your questions, and uh, after this uh, webinar, you would you will have uh, other question. Um, they will have uh, an if in the list of questions to be answered that will be available. Um, then we EPSA will answer to all your questions. As William said, the most that you will use the MSS Composer, you, the, the easier it will, it will become. So, I hope that to you find uh, the information that you're coming to, that you expected today. Mm. We are a little bit uh, earlier, but um, maybe we could announce the the, the structure for the, for for Wednesday mm -hmm. again. So as uh, William said, on Wednesday, uh, William and Vincent will uh, explain to you how to fill in, uh, how to fill, how to fill in, sorry, um, rotational crop MSS composer and animal and livestock uh, MSS composer, and uh, they will insist on their specific of, on their specificities. Um, I hope that you, tomorrow you have time to practice uh, to try to fill in the MSS Composer and have a lot of questions for us. <laughs> and uh, I hope that we, we, we will answer to all of your questions on Wednesday. Do you want to add something? Uh, I just want to thank everybody that uh, stayed till the end because uh, it's a pleasure to share with you uh, our works on uh, the MSS composers and uh, we are glad to present it to you today. Yes, yeah, thank you very much for all the questions, uh, all the day long, uh, really relevant question. So thank you very much for your participation and your attention. Yes, thanks a lot. It was really a, a pleasure to, to do this work. And yes, thanks a lot for your question because it's quite hard to be uh, that the formation is an active one when we are still uh, both at home or a different place. So yes, it was a great job and thanks a lot for all of this uh, interaction.